do we have any changes to the agenda? First of all, no, cool. Okay, public comment. Are we with Deanna bringing her letter? We're just go right into the list or stuff. So we'll just include her in that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, well, let's start with the staffing and the listers and all of that. So we did receive three letters, actually, the lister following town meeting day. Uh, and I think that this year for uh, assistant assessor, Matt Reed said he'd like to continue as assistant assessor. And Leslie and Deanna are in for the board of lister, listers for the board of listers. So it's a little bit two different things going on, but I think that's where we're at. So I don't usually it's just a discussion, you know, kind of like what's going on, how it's going to work, uh, what the board wants to do about uh, the letters of interest. You can wait till the next election, which is one option. You can take the letters at a point to the next election. Um, I think you have a a new contract for town assessor, a new uh, relationship with Johnson, where two assessors and two assistant assessors. So there's all sorts of assessor and lister stuff going on. Could be a little confusing. Doesn't mean that that can't all work, but all the different roles, if they all remain, it would have to be really clearly laid out, obviously. We don't want people doing double work or unnecessary work and those kind of things. And every town just has a different setup. So you can, it's sort of what Hyde Park wants to do at this point. So we need to have three listers. Is that what the normal two, is? Two or three to have a board of listers. OK. OK. Well, and it's Susan here. And the listers have to go through and have all the training, right, to be, to be considered a lister. That's why we sort of have these assistant listers, side listers. Oh. Yeah. The training is uh, run by property valuation review. They have level one, level two, level three, level four. You can't do reappraisal unless you're three or four, for example. I think anybody can do some grand list maintenance and work on this training because some of it is mandatory by PBR to touch their stuff. It's all state. It's not town of Hyde Park software or computer schedules or any of that stuff. It's really a state program run by the state and each town decides whether they're gonna have a board of listers, an assessor, or a hybrid of the two. So what training for a lister? I think anybody can run for board of lister office. PBR will expect the work to be at a certain standard. So they'll have training to get people up to a certain standard. Uh, and the problem with that, they're changing their program again. So every time they change a program, we have to go back for training on the new program. So a lot of towns have sort of split the difference with having paid assessors, basically the professional assessors that have all the training, and then the board of listers decides on what, how much help they need to do their Title 32 compliance, which is grandest maintenance, basically. We've always contracted out probably about 90% of reappraisal. That that usually is always done by a contracted contract, <clears throat> and the listers would always help do some part of that. And that's uh, always been that way. I think so. As far as I know, it's always been. When you were working with it, Deanna, was it was done yeah. that way? No? Yeah, we were active in all the grievances. Okay, the three listers. Okay. Yeah, the reappraisal was done by. Ed Colfelder, his crew, and I, I oh, so you helped, right? Yeah, yes. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, there's always there's, and that's what I mean about the communication because it, it, everybody has to comply with 32. I don't think too, but there's a lot, lots of ways to get there, and some of it has to do with workload, time commitment, you know, all that other stuff. So, so are you trained or because you did it before? Well, I was trained, but everything everything's changed, changed right? so much. That I talked to Justin, and he's being trained by Terry at this point. Oh. So if I could sit in, or even Leslie, we yeah. could sit in on that training. It shouldn't cost any more okay. to do three of us versus one, I would think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be an option. Is it an online training? Or um, what is it? Mostly Tara and I are working in person. She's oh. online here as well. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, we mostly work in person on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I've been in Johnson, and here I've been here on Thursdays. 
from eight to four. That switches up a little bit. There's also online trainings available. Right. Um, I'm attending four trainings. There's May 2nd and 3rd, I believe, and May 15th and 17th. They're both Tuesday and Wednesday, and those are available online from 9 to 12. Okay. So those are new in season listers trainings. Oh, what so are the times that you're doing um, your training with Harry? Um, what Thursday, did you say, Monday and Wednesday? Uh, Thursdays. In Hyde Park, it's been Thursdays. I'm here from 8 to 4. She was here whenever she wants to be. <laughs> I'm like, between like 9 and 1. I schedule that. <laughs> 9 and 1, something in that range. Um, we're going to be doing inspections this Thursday and possibly next Thursday. So right now, we don't have set hours for each town because there's a lot to do and catch up on in both towns. Yeah, but okay. My availability is typically in weekday afternoons, except for Fridays, twelve to four, and then one full day, which is the Thursdays. Okay. You know, I don't mind stepping up if if I'm appointed. I'm assuming I shouldn't assume that. Um, I wouldn't mind stepping up and helping Justin with the on-site visits. I've done them for twenty plus years. They're not hard. Right. It's easy. Um, just information, you have a, a checklist that you go to each site with. Um, so I'd be more than glad to help with that. Okay. I think you have to do all of us. Yeah. You have to deal with one. Do it with all three of us. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Have, have you done it before? I've not done it before. No. I'm a realtor, so I. Oh, so you kind of it'll just be know all that stuff. Might. <laughs> 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 just a little bit. Right. 20, 40 years. <laughs> so I'd be more than glad to do that and help. And I know Beth and we want to make this work. Yeah. Exactly. I'd like to see Justin stay on what he's doing. We're way behind. Hyde Park. Yeah. Used to be top of the list with the state. We are not now. Yeah. Um, and we gotta be back there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a different number. Do you want me to talk now too? As long as it's sort of just discussion or should I read my number? You can talk now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I'm interested, I said assistant assessor, because back before town meeting, you didn't have anybody. So I stood up at town meeting and then the other stood up. And so um, I'm not interested in being a lister. I was just, I'm interested in assistant assessor. I don't mind taking the lister's course, but I, I really am not looking to be work for the state. I've read work for you. Um, and so, and Matt was going to leave and now he's not. And so, <laughs> but I was just looking to be a local voice if needed. Of course, I can do the inspections. I was an elected appraiser. Uh, private appraiser for the Hoosville Appraisal Associate for oh. almost 30 years. Um, but I, I don't have my license anymore. It was too cost effective if I wasn't working. So um, that's my position. I'm just interested in helping out. And if you need me a little break, and if um, the assessor needed more help, I, I could come in on an hourly basis and help them with whatever they wanted. And I really like to do the house inspection. That's, that's my favorite part. It is kind of food. <laughs> Seeing all the new houses that we're building, right? That are being built. Yeah. Uh, what was your previous position? I uh, was a licensed real estate appraiser for the state of Vermont, in the state of Vermont. It was a private company. We did appraisals for anyone in the banks. Well, anyone who contacted us. And what terms did you serve as lister? How many? Yeah. Oh, God. So, oh. What year to what year? Oh, mid 80s to 90. Well, into the 90s, right? Well, yes, I just got done three or four years ago. Oh, God, you did it that long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went through three reappraisals. The last one was 2018. So I've been through three of them. I don't know how. Too long. <laughs> That's why I've been a lot. <laughs> Too old, maybe longer than I've been. It was late 80s, I think I came as listed because I was on a school board before that. And then Nick Von Eisen got done. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. So when, yeah, Mary Boss and I and Trinco. Thank you. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So we've gone from no help to lots of help. I know. I don't think this is a problem. 
right? Not at all. <laughs> well, how about it? I was going to say, I mean, it's obviously. I mean, what, what role does the, like, for the select board of the listers, the listers do most of the reporting. They're going to do it back to Justin, anyways, right? That's how we're going to roll I think, this. I think Justin is our contact. Right. So, yeah. And then Justin's going to report anything back yeah. to us. I think so. Anything that think. needs to be signed and any changes, yeah. et cetera, yeah. right? Yes. I That's, don't know what the state requires on that, but. Yeah, I don't even. Harry, yeah. I welcome the weigh in as well. Oh. Um, for the next six months, I'm on probation or training, whatever. So, okay. a supervisor, and then we we'll reevaluate after six months. Okay. But kind of a little green still. Okay. Terry, do you have anything to add? Um, yes, you have a very good board of three volunteers there. <laughs> that's what you needed. Um, right now, I'm just signed on to train Justin because I don't know if you all realize, but I have been trying to get this shared assessor job going for since 2019 when I semi-retired from Essex. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the problem that the state of Vermont has is they're, you can't find anybody to do these jobs and most places do not have listers and nobody will sign up for listers. So that's why you have to go to the, you know, change it to an assessor. And um, <clears throat> it's very difficult to fill this position. That's why I'm trying to get the younger generation into it by having it a shared job. Um, but if, if you decide to sign on your three listers here that want to come on, what they would be basically our signers and make sure that we're doing our job correctly. So they would just be signing. Oh, let me give you a perfect example. I work in Morristown. I have three listers there. Um, they don't really know how to do the job. So in Morristown, I have an office person who does all the um, what I call easy stuff. And then I do all the inspections, I do all the valuations, I do all the sketching, I do everything. I do all the current use, I do everything. Um, and uh, the listers, they, I send them my change notices, they go over them, they ask questions, and then they just sign off on the grand list is what they do. So they're kind of like a second eye on what I'm doing. And that's how um, your listers would be for now, you know, as long as we're still doing what we're doing with, with me training Justin. Yeah. So what do we need to do? Just appoint, well, we make, decide yeah, what yeah, we yeah, want to appoint? Three, three letters plus the, I'll do it again for Matt. And there's two different positions. Matt Steele, uh, how he's been using it anyway, is really just like on call. So like he's a surveyor, he's he has a lot of re deed research. So he he would he like to go and figure out difficult problems with deeds, you know, acreage, you know, exactly. Right. Figure out what's missing. Does do they need a survey? And he'd meet with landowners and try to work through those things because sometimes it's all new to a landowner that they have a deed problem or a survey problem. So that was his role, and he would volunteer that time and. And that was something that Nemrec, who we were prior to contract with last year, would not do. That they would not spend that time because they were contracted. They were in 18 towns and they were in here and out and they were doing their statutory minimum. Okay. So if the board said, let's continue with that, that's what Beth would be doing. She would be like the on call with Matt. We got a problem. Landowner wants to talk to a local resident. So that could be the assessor role, assistant type role. Very, very finite things. Mm -hmm. The board of listers, if you appoint them, would would be, have all the statutory power back. So they would be ultimately uh, responsible for compliance with Title 32. The select board would then decide to continue with Terry and Justin as the professional trained team that's being paid by the town of Johnson. And we get an invoice every month for the services. And they are responsible for the workload, like making sure that things are done on time. The board of listers would make sure, like a double check, you know, make sure things are done. And then when they grant this needs to be filed or something needs to be signed, the board of listers will have a meeting and they pass the motion to sign something and two or more would sign it and submit it on time. So if you're going to hire Justin and continue with hiring Justin uh, Terry, then their deal keeps going. The board of listers has access to their services. 
and they need to communicate those things and, and do what you were doing before. If you're training, let's get together on training. Yeah. If you're not training, oh, you guys are meeting on a Saturday. I can't do that, but I'll catch up with you know, just whatever that communication is, that can totally happen. And then you would have open meeting law and have a meeting and do things just normally like a real board if you have to follow the compensation for either the assistant assessor or the board of listers was always sort of mixed based on the amount of skill or time spent. So like uh, when Julie was the most senior lead lister, she would be getting 20 or $21 an hour. And I think Deanna and uh, sort of- Yes, Jared. So, but they have, um, they have an approved rate of big minimum wage. So I think it was 15, but yeah. 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 So it was a minimum wage. So, if they, so it no, wasn't I, a stipend. We did, it during was, the reappraisal, I did. Just well, it's going to say, right. Anything else, we just, it was kind of a volunteer service. So that would be your job is to figure out that. Piece. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We haven't yeah. had a discussion, right. so I have no idea, but you can either volunteer for the listers, you can get paid that way with people having different rates of pay because they're going to be doing more work right. or they just show up. Yeah, quarterly to sign the necessary paper. I have no idea what it is. I think it's going to be a work in progress thing. Yeah. I don't think any of us know how this is going to work. I don't, especially. Right. Justin's learning with Carrie, and I would love to sit in on some of that because I really did enjoy it. But I know Leslie would like to get paid, so we would like to know what that figure would be. Yeah. Um, but I think it's going to be a work in progress. Me right. too. And the workload's probably going to be a lot heavier. Well, in the beginning, right? right? And then once you're caught up, exactly. it's probably going to then level up right. and not be right. nearly this much. It's going to be about three months. Tax bills go out. Rent list has to be done, right? Right. Four so months. we yeah. have a budget for this, right? We're paying them, right? Well, you don't. We're not paying them, right? Oh, we're not paying Okay. No, we, we have a budget that you had an increase for July 1. Yeah, so you don't have anything in 2023. You've got zero. To move to the new system. You know, the new system being we needed more money to fund the hired assessor. We got rid of NEMREC because we knew we were switching. Mm -hmm. So the, the money part, like I said, I haven't, I haven't even looked at it yet because I didn't know what, what all was happening in the last week. Right, <laughs> so, right. So, <laughs> so if you're, you you're going to have a pre and expected low demand for Beth and uh, Matt, which is what the history has been, pretty low. It's not a regular thing. Then I'm not worried about that because we have money in the budget under our disability oh, yeah, and that's in our budget for that. <laughs> the, uh, interest of so you're not using NEMRIC at all anymore? You're not kind of this, this is this is the NEMRIC. This, this is the NEMRIC. Terry is the NEMRIC. Okay. Right. Terry, so the, when we get ready to do a new town reappraisal, it's going to be. We'll probably go out to bid for that because it's so okay. it's clearly yeah. at $50,000. Okay. Like, yeah. Plus the state takes it. The state's like this close to taking it back, but I don't know if they're going to get through. You don't need the same volume. I know. No, no. <laughs> they're, they're thinking they want to take it over. They make enough for one. Just one. Mm -hmm. Try being a real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that would just leave the board listers as a new element to the budget, basically. It wasn't anticipated. Well, you've got people willing to do it, right? We've been looking for this. Uh, I yeah. It. Thanks for stepping up. Exactly. I think if it's a work in progress, then maybe you just present to the board what the budget's going to be, what your hours are, and we go from there. Right? Well, we really don't know. Right. right. But as you come, as you come. If yeah. you're okay let's with not, that. And we'll, let's not get a year ahead of ourselves and be like, hey, boom, we just we right. had a $20,000 right. exactly. shortfall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all going to be basically up to Justin on what he wants to delegate us to help him. And then training, you know, yeah. you guys are in yeah, training the, time. The way, and the way that Johnson and Terry has been hired as a supervisor to be the, sort of be like the board lister, make sure they're done on time, watch your Title 32 compliance, make sure Justin's ramping up, getting a certificate, all that stuff Terry was going to do in the first six months, as well as complete the grant list in, in June and get that done for tax reform. So there's a whole bunch of stuff layered in there. That doesn't mean that when, as you guys get figure out where you want to focus your energy, that some of those job sharing things would be, oh yeah, that's fine. It, we'll, we'll start doing that now. But as soon as they're appointed, they have to start assigning the documents. So if there's something new tomorrow and you appoint the night, right. even if the money part isn't figured out, they are the official board listed until the next election and they'll both have to run for their new terms in March. Next year. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Next. Question. Next. Yeah. Two questions on that. Um, if they are appointed, if it as of next March, are they all on three-year terms, or is it like staggered? Staggered. Staggered. So you know, I'll just kind of choose which one to be more comfortable with. Yeah, they'll go under a three-year term or one. Yeah. Depending on what they're interested. And who's the third lister that sent in that? I think Terry was thinking Beth was. Right. There's two listers. Two are, listers. And two listers that, that have a letter of interest. Matt's not interested in being a lister. No. no. He's he's so he's part time available okay they're very part time available okay. That's okay. Matt, I, I sort of just well this all started and it's more like all over the place yeah. because there was no local voice yeah that's why i went into that so right, um, right. well i'll start right. on that and then if you don't right. mind i'll work with you some and yeah. maybe yeah. by next year i'll say well yeah i see it it's it's great. Great. Yeah. three candidates for March. exactly <laughs> yeah that, right. that will not be he's not here he's okay so he's already he's Oh, it started, there was no blisters. It was like, no, I think that was something like that. Yeah. 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 Right. You couldn't give her that many answers. Right. For months. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Two and a half. Yeah, two and a half, right? <laughs> Will we from... need three blisters? No. No. We just need two to seven. Okay. So, so I need to make a motion to appoint Deanna as head and Leslie, Leslie right. as. No, no, no. the second member. Just, just we're, we're still part. Yeah, we're definitely. I'll make a motion that Deanna and Leslie are equal listeners. Equal listeners until, <laughs> until, <laughs> until next year's vote. And she signs my thing. Right. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. Um, and should we add into that motion? Like, mo money will be discussed. I don't, yeah, we basically, that's okay. You know, the, we'll just we'll okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the we'll, board of listeners will report back to the board of listeners. Perfect. Yeah. And okay. when do you want us to do that? Yeah. And when like we'll give us a timeline. Think, think, think of a month for check-ins for the a next month? Yeah. April 25th. Okay. Just to should we check in with Jen on that too? Ask Jen when can you know Jen being an account like what she wants. Because I'm sure yeah. she, Jen's our town account. Oh. So uh, I don't know if she wants like a three month time, you know, report. Like, I don't know. Should we ask her? No, the, the, what happens with payroll, uh, you do bi weekly now. So if you, if you come to, okay, here's the new rates of pay, then you can choose that schedule. And what? if you're not doing any work for a month or two and you have one hour, they can batch it into okay. Whatever schedule you want to pay, but we have to tell you you can do it by weekly because that's our regular. So, okay. so well, we have to sign a contract. Are we covered by your insurance? To that's the plus. plus. You didn't vote. Out. I was going to say we vote. We need a motion for <laughs> Miss Bass. They voted. Right. So, can we have a motion for assistant assessor? Right. That's what we're calling her. Okay. Call assistant. Call. Yeah, co assessor. Co, co assistant assessor. No, assessor. <laughs> that. And that. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have no one opposed. We all are in favor. Well, welcome, ladies. Thank you very, very much. Look over Justin and Jerry's shoulder. The public office. For your charge. <laughs> but yeah, if, I be, mean, that would be very helpful for us to get back mm -hmm. on track. I, I mean, are you, are you okay, okay with that? Jerry, are you okay with that? Yeah. Jerry, are you okay with that? Well, I just, I do want to bring up a point. Huh? Um, so I don't know if you understand, but Nimerick has been the grand list state They've been taking care of it through the state and the state has is in the process of switching over to Axiomatic, who is like at least two to three months behind right now. Um, so we're not getting HS122 downloads. We're not getting current use. We're not getting anything. Um, right now is going to be a very busy time and I'm going to be training Justin and I'm not going to have a lot of time to train others right now. If you just want to sign on or be appointed as listers to sign stuff, that would be good for this year because there's problems with the state. There's problems with axiomatic. Um, Nimric may have to flip the switch and go back to Nimric way. 
Um, and as, as you know, April 1st is the uh, brand list deadline. And I've got to take Justin out on inspections in both towns. And uh, we only have one day a week to do that. So training extra people right now is not going to be a good thing because we've got we're way we're way behind because of the state. So I just want to point that out. If you want to appoint listers to be listers, they can sign stuff. I can go over stuff with them. They can get copies of all the changes. But right now, I don't think we can take on new trainees right now. But this fall we can, but not right now. It's it's just we're way too we're way behind. What about the online trainings that Justin mentioned? Is that something that they could do? Or uh, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> right now, to sign up for state courses, there's already waiting lists, uh -huh. so they wouldn't be able to do that right now. The classes that Justin has taken, and because of my connection, so don't tell anybody. <laughs> I was able to I was able to slip him into this new class because it was already closed, but I got him in. Okay. Um, so there's not going to be a lot um, of things offered. I mean, there's there's things like newsletters and this and there's things you can watch. There's uh, you can go to like Valo meetings and listen in and stuff like that. You can do stuff like that once you're appointed, and you know we can make sure you get the links for that. But like I said, right now the state's behind at least three months, um, and. I've got to do April 1st inspections with Justin's in the next three weeks. And then we've got more inspections to do after that. So trying to train somebody else with us right now is, is not, going to, not going to work very well. If you want to sign on to be, you know, if you want to be list uh, signers, that will be easy because I can just send you stuff, say, here are all the changes, this is what we're doing. And you can ask questions and then, you can sign it like in Morristown. I do everything and the listers just sign the grand list. Okay. Lucy. Um, do you think if there's a day that I'm here without you, just work on PTRs or other things that Diana or Leslie could be in the office with me? Just I, I don't think that's a good idea right now because we're, like I said, we're so far behind and, you know, there's, I've got problems with Hyde Park's cloud because I can't print anything from it. They're gonna have him working on that stuff. Um, so I don't think that would be a good idea right now. This, once we're done this grain list, then we've got all kinds of time. But right now we've got to get the grain list done. It has to be launched by June 4th. Um, and you've got to have grievance hearings. They can sit on, in, on the grievance hearings if there's any. Uh, usually I don't have any, so that's good. Um, I might have one or two, but nothing big. But right now, it's just, it's too, there's too much to do in too little time right now. Thoughts, Deanna? <laughs> we found it. I think if we had run and been elected, we'd still be in, in the, the same home. position. Yeah, That's I think so, so too. Still. Yeah, pretty odd in a, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not asking for special classes. We just wanted to tag along on this one and especially the inspections because that's what we're going to be doing most of. Right. Not like I have a gun. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't say what you think. Let's see a public office in right. town, we're in so that right. my view, being a board member, and I, Terry, I don't want to go against you, but. You guys have a right to set in on it, in my view. Well, I understand where she's coming from. Yeah. When you're yeah, sure. when you're training one person right. and you've got three more people asking questions, right? An eight-hour day turns into a 15-hour day and you didn't get anything done. Exactly. So I do get that. Yeah. Well, that's but, right. I, I'm wondering if setting in with no questions. If you guys are just you <laughs> have you ever <laughs> Yeah, she said 50 yeah. hours, that's 45 hours. <laughs> I know. But do you think Terry spoke? Terry spoke. Okay. I, I just, you know, it's, it's, I get it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So by June 1st, we're saying we're, we're going to make that commitment. Though. We're just going to see. We're going to wait and see how it goes. Right. Okay. And well, I think that's what we're all. You may end up with three resigned listers. <laughs> <laughs> But well, that's yeah, but we'll see. No, but that time she's saying your time's going to come. Yes, let's yes. wait. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Terry. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you very much.
I was hoping there would be online courses as in I can sit on my computer and take them as I want. That's right. You know, and hoping. go on and off, and it wouldn't be interrupting anybody else if I had lunch. I was hoping for something like that. Well, I that's what too. we used to do. We used to go to the state often them for all listeners after you were elected. Yeah. And they're full. The state, is, the state is changing. Everything. The state is out of control. Yeah. The state is changing. Everything. Thing I See, that's what I, but you clearly need to have somebody else training as well. You know, yeah. that's. Right. Yeah, everybody's out busy. So yeah. there are um, listeners' handbooks. They yes. supposed to be at home as well. We've got one upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Yep. So that's Maybe available. We can get, yeah, a couple more. Yeah, and I have them on my email, and I can forward I, to yeah. you. And yes, we'll work there are some that. recorded trainings on the website as well. I'm not exactly sure how you access them, other than I have the link, so I could just send that to you. Yeah. I think you have so, my email. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have yours, but if you yeah. want to write it down, I will. Sheet. I will. Okay. And speaking of which. So sorry, I don't remember your name. What? Yeah. Oh, Ryan. Thanks. No one. Okay. Yep. <laughs> he's, a, he's trouble. You don't want to. All right. Okay, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you, thank you. ladies, yeah. very much. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. If you need help with the break, with the inspections, we're here. Yes, I love that part. <laughs> 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 Exactly. Exactly. Ladies, thanks for stepping up. Thank you very much. Allie's online. Right? Okay, so okay. <laughs> Hi, Allie. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hi guys. Hello. So we have another one that stepped up. You want to be our animal control officer? Well, part-time. I would love to help keep. <laughs> There's no way I'm doing this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm sure Keith would love the help, right? Have yeah, you we, had to him? we had a meeting a uh, week, 10 days ago, and we had talked about everything and how things are sort of done, if you will. Mm -hmm. Relationship to the sheriff, relationship to the kennel, relationship to people that don't train their dogs very well, or vice versa. That, person isn't trained very well how to take care of their dog at basic style. Mm -hmm. But all those things get mixed up with how hard you push on enforcement. We do have an ordinance. We do have a fee schedule. The courts are not supportive. You know, they take their time. They dismiss cases for no reason. So we try to do the heavy on the education side. Chris has been great sending repeat letters. So it's kind of a, a group effort on that let end. And we try not to do the enforcement, even though you'll issue a warrant to go take dogs in June, probably somewhere in there, where people don't get licensed. You issue that dog warrant. And Allie and uh, Keith, hopefully we'll do some follow-up with Krista on that list to get it down to zero. Yeah, That's one of the goals of the warrant. And if somebody really doesn't, play so to speak we haven't taken that away. yeah the warrants say they could do it but we haven't taken it yeah. but on the flip side it can get very annoying to have people keep coming and not talking to you and reminding you and eventually somebody costs up their 12 bucks but okay. so so anyway that, well, we talked about all those things very quickly so i think the relationship between Allie and keith would be and this is how it kind of goes uh paul comes in <laughs> Have an issue with a dog. Krista might get the call. Krista will try and get in touch with Keith. Keith will listen, triage it. If it's an ordinance issue or potentially a legal issue, they'll get it to me. If it's a lost dog that needs to be searched for, then everybody kind of notices up and they talk. Allie might be in Garfield and Allie can go run the roads, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's notices that put up. If it's an injury case, he usually stops what he's doing and he has all the gear to go get the dog. Oh, okay. So we need a motion on that. We, we have the one in the budget, right? Yes and no. The end of the draw. Well, yes, no. <laughs> well, as a member of the that money was allocated to Keith. Yeah, there was right. We, we gave a certain and then the town salary, town wage, but it has an auxiliary help. Okay. Why? That, and that's where that would come from. That would come from. Okay. It, it probably would come from animal control, so it looked like it's overspent, but it was covered by the administrative 
auxiliary line. Yeah. Until we adjust the budget right. in 25. And Allie will put in her time based on call. Uh, uh, we thought, Allie, you want to talk to that? I think you were agreeable to what <clears throat> Keith gets. Uh, yeah, um, we had discussed that, you know, uh, pay would be kind of based off of per call and how many calls like Keith did or how many calls I did. So say, you know, during a calendar year, um, Keith did 70% of the calls, I did 30% or, you know, any amount of mixture you want to put in there, uh, it would just go off of that. And uh can't remember exactly what the the scale was but it was fine with me i'm just happy to help out keith because i know he he does a lot and he, he kind of does need some help yeah, <laughs> yeah so the, the current you just approved keith's new pay which is two but payments twice five a year or something right? yeah 450 a payment yep. twice a year. yep so i think what ali is saying is that we again to, almost like with the board of listeners we don't quite know what the relationship will be or what the manual will be so when we get to June, which is the first scheduled payment, if they did 50% of the work evenly, then maybe they get both 450. Mm -hmm. If somebody's doing 90% and somebody's doing that. Sure. You know, that 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 wasn't, you know, I'm expecting more work. In other words, we can't respond to everything. Yes. So there will be an increase in responses and time. So the 450 was based on what Keith's capacity was. Uh, See what okay. I mean? Mm -hmm. So even if Ali comes on and they have a 50-50 split, there could be twice as much response being done. Mm -hmm. So that's where the 450 would be fair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yep. So anyway, that that thousand dollars is not in the budget, but it has to be added to it. I need to know with Ali coming on if we wanted to put some type of line in or something, some type of agreement ahead of time. So that way. We're not again a year ahead of like where this would keep and Allie saying, "Hey, uh, I didn't get paid for what I did." And no, I, th I think the, I think it's going to work okay. But if she agrees to what Keith is it's twice a year, June and December, yep. the, the maximum is nine hundred for each of those periods. And if they want to split it fifty fifty, or if they want to do ninety ten, that we'll let them propose that. Okay. But twice a year, they have to tell us. Again, I'm not trying to be an ass. I just didn't know if we want to draw lines. Now is that so the understanding is good and clear and yeah. No, it's good. The cap is there already. It's just they have to figure out how that split goes based on how they feel. Appreciate you, Alec. Thank you. And then next budget, <clears throat> we can adjust, adjust it yes. for next exactly. year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we I'll need a moment. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Did we lose Susan? No, oh, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> It's like I'm loving all these people stepping up. It's wonderful. I know. It's Susan, awesome. Susan, do you also I? Yes. <laughs> I thank you very much, Allie. We appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you guys. Okay. My goodness. So are we gonna go through all these other yeah, so that's the question. I know we have we talk I about was here probably on or something. You guys have anything else other than Brian? Yeah. Brian, are you here for Brian? Or you want to hear Stan? You want to hear? If you want to get something and go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're good. You're good? Yeah. Okay. You're you're good. We'll enjoy that. Okay. Memories of board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't Susan, what do you do you, do you see we're trying to figure out if we want to get into all the staffing things or cut loose highway and get rid of Brian first? I I think that if, if there are things we can do quickly, because this the staffing stuff is going to take some time. So if anybody's there who wants to get it out fast, we uh or we could make them stay and torture them. <laughs> yeah, that's so nice. <laughs> I think number seven is the only other thing for oh, right. yeah. to put that out there, I believe. I forgot she was involved in that yeah. too. Right. Yeah, we did seven. Do you want me to do my part community? Circle? I was gonna say, do you want to do the community circle now? So then oh, you can step, sure. then I you can go fine. home and <laughs> enjoy your evening. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I'm here from the High Park Community Circle. I'm here. Okay. And um 
we have a lot of equipment. You've seen what I sent, but we have a lot of equipment for the four events we put on, and we've sort of been moving it around from people's house to house, but excited that we really need a place that is ours to keep what we need. So we went and we decided the shed was the right thing, and we went and looked and we how much we had and what would be 10 by 10. So, um, and we looked at the 10 by 10 plain storage, couldn't be any less plain. Um, and that's the quote that we that we got. And so then you you have three things. You need a space, you need a gravel pad, and you need a shed. So um, we contacted Ron because we are part of the town of High Park, and it made sense to us to have it on town property. And um, Ron came up with a great place. We need access to it all winter because all year because we do winter events up on the if you are in the upper parking lot and you look off to the left, there's enough space for a 10 by 10 shed. But then it also came up that the town could use a little more storage space as well. So that maybe it made sense to get a bigger shed and um, we would have, as long as we get 10 by 10, 20 square feet, we're, we're happy. <laughs> um, and so that, that I brought, I did look, I sent you a quote, we went to the, um, the place in Wolcott because they're local and they yeah. we know their quality is really good. Um, so then I was supposed to have two two other quotes. So I did look online at um, and I brought these at the tractor supply and um uh, a few flows. And they yeah. they what I found from them was um they would send you a nice package and you got to put it together yourself and they weren't painted either. So um so the quotes aren't you know so and the other thing is we were hoping that the town because you have the equipment and you have the gravel that it would make sense for the town to do the gravel pad so i didn't get a quote on that either yeah um so what we're hoping from the high park community circle is for permission to have at least part of the shed and, and ron has agreed to take on the project if you agree and then he can i have for him i have color swaps and different you know this is your nine different your 19 different choices um but it would be great if we could have this shed for our stuff okay that, so that's what we have to so what do we need it for the town uh right now we have no real storage if we want to the list of the town clerk has a big storage. <laughs> this that whole area between yeah. the vault and the what's behind that wall is all their storage. That's a utility room. Yeah. No storage upstairs. Okay. A couple of small closets for um, some paper towels. <laughs> uh, some of that storage that was in that room is being cleaned out because it's the water and electric shouldn't be mixed in with paper towels and chemicals <laughs> and stuff. So we're taking that out and putting it into the new closet in the bathroom. So okay. That, that's all done now. We're in the process of moving stuff in there. So that will be purely mechanical. Okay, good. No storage, nobody moving in there and out of there. It's fire alarm, it's phones and fiber and electric and the water for this. That room is what's left over there. And that room is uh partly used right now for the for the um what was it, the history trail thing? Good fiscal year stuff. Right, so that's it's like a transition room. So right now we go in there with the year end boxes and kind of leave oh. them there, and then eventually they get stored over here. So it's a, sort of like a work room, but now it's also storage. Okay. So we have things that we're not using. So I think it was, there was a dehumidifier until not long ago, which we got rid of. But there's a uh, big signs for the history walk down the rail trail. Oh, that's yep. an example that really needs to be in cold storage home and not in a work area. Yeah. What kind of items are you storing? What? what kind of items are you storing? Um, we have bins with um, things for our raffles, for our ice cream social stuff. It's it's mainly bins. We have tables. We have some chairs. Um, we went and looked. All of it right now is in someone's garden shed who wants to use it for gardening soon. Um, <laughs> and we measured the space and that. We wanted to have enough space that we could have a bin for the puppets and plants, all the stuff in a bin, and then we could have the raffle, all the stuff for the ice cream social, our bins and things that we use every year, and our tables, and then have each event have its, so we're not pawing through all our stuff every time trying to find 
what we have. Are you looking to run like a power service over the shale? No, we don't need any power. We need access because of the what well, we just did plant, plants and puppets and 120 people. I know it was a big turnout. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, and then we access it again for the wreath ceremony in the winter. Um, so it has to be, it can't be, that's why we got off the parking lot with great spots because we could get to it in the winter. But um, would like a storage shed work? Just like like a like a conics box? Steel? Yeah. Something that would be a little more abrasive that you could put better locks on that you're not going to have staff. Yeah, there, I think that's uh, it's an option we didn't talk about. It's a it's really just a steel container, small. Yeah, you, those are usually ten by twenty or something. Yeah, like that, yeah. a little larger. Um, and they, that's up to, that's and, up then, to and then you could get like a twenty, and then you could put a divider if you want to do. You want to separate your storage. You could have one side, somebody could have the other. Yeah, that's up to you. I think when we were, I think the shed idea was more about the aesthetics of coming up to mm -hmm. the mountain office yeah. and having it look nice. But that's an option that um, I think initially we were looking at the common garage, try to find a corner up there, and then you have the gate with people going in and out of a construction zone kind of setting, and that didn't seem to work. Uh, having it down by the road also didn't work because it was it was just not something you want in front of a right. town building. So that's why I picked the upper left back because it's drainage ditch that comes from the parking lot and it ties and all their snow into that corner. But we'd set it a little bit further this time. Whether you want a steel structure that looks like a care custom cargo ship box, right? Like just yeah. a steel wall. So the only reason why I mentioned it, we're, we're dealing with some of the stuff at the wreck we have on these sheds and it became a wicked mouse infestation. Oh, without the steel, it's a wicked mouse infestation. Yep. So we, we, have, we have everything in totes and no right. like food or anything. Right. Of course, it's ours isn't. I'm wondering if maybe we, yeah. I'm, well, ours might, might be like a swap with our rec facility because we do have a nice yellow wooden shed. Okay. Oh, that you're not going to use anymore, potentially. Oh, for baseball? Yeah, but I, I could come down here and we would pose a comic circle or whatever. I, I, I just, I, I don't want to speak. To yeah. For doing this or anything. You're but speaking out loud. Just speaking out loud. Yeah, so the, the reason we picked here was just simply closer to the village than most of the events are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. under other spotlight in the parking lot, plow it all in the winter so they can get in and out of it. We've been in the same boat. Yeah. I know the rec. Same, I recommend you have asked the same deal. Yeah, or, if there's another site or you know a bigger site that has all those pieces where it's not in front of a building, it's sort of on the side or the back. Uh, the highway has an issue on a lot of these public properties because you need snow areas to pile. You know, mm -hmm. think of the three or four foot storms, which you don't really get anymore, but you should have to plan on that and not have it all boxed in. So there's all sorts of competing. <laughs> Just the shed. Yeah. Well, no, we thought about the, the that old storage unit, like the one behind the one on players. Um, and they were sort of in the same ballpark price. And we just didn't know if you want to look at them. They are really, you know, there is a little bit of aesthetics if you're going to look at it. No doubt. You have it on the in sight. So that, but I don't think Hyde Park Community Circle cares, right? I don't think so. so no, we just want a nice, safe place for our stuff. That's why we went into 10 by 10 as plain as they could get. Yeah. So we, we have a storage issue in the town. I, that's the only reason I'm bringing it up because I can see if Community Circle gets one, we have the not weeded that eventually. Oh, she that. might want to use some space. True. Sure. Sure. We got 40 committees that, you know, one shed well, for I one think committee it might not be fair. But yeah, I, you I know. think we were planning to buy it. And by the way, we were planning to buy it. It's very good. Yes. Yeah. To buy it, so it needed a space. And then it came up that. Well, okay. there's some money too. Totally yeah. Good it's a good saying, idea. No, I understand what you're saying. 20 or 30 different yeah. committees, and now somebody's going to say, hey, how can they get a shed? And now they want a shed, and I want a shed, and she wants a shed, and he wants a shed. I thought they were going to be able to carry it. I'm part of the truck outside of the lot. You're a whole garage, right? Perfect. <laughs> so I think the moral of this story is we're definitely all in agreement. It's just maybe trying to figure out what we want to do. And if it's kind of again, we're a place that's fire station. So I guess sort of what we're hoping, well, first of all, we have to 
our stuff has to get out of where it is. So I maybe we can use this space here. But yeah, <laughs> right. but we'll yeah. yeah. So um, but we want in the interim that we need a permit because because this is in the village. So but Ron is especially if you're going to have some of the space for stuff that you're using as well. Um agree to take it on. So we are hoping and we're hoping to keep this moving forward so we end up with the space. We're hoping that you'll say sure, give it to Ron. So we'll so you guys are going to pay for it. The bill would pay for it. And, and you'll then it came up that there's our funds kicking around. We then also said it to I listened at town meeting that that fifty thousand dollar one of the words was sheds. I did hear that. But we are we are really we were actually going to pay for it, and then someone said, well, there's going to be other funds. Maybe we don't have to use our funds for that. But we're not, it's really we need the shift. With the yeah. entire community circle has to pay for part. Um, that's fine. We just want the shed. So that might make a difference to other your other and you've got, you've got some quotes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be better it's about, to then yeah. work it out and do it, and then we'll give them the land because then you all the questions you ask. Will go away if you want to shed and buy the building. Yeah, but I mean, we're also a town entity. Uh, well, we're going to give them the same homes. They can yeah. use that land up there. Boys will put it from a pad. Probably be the cheapest, I mean, the fastest way for them to get a storage place. Unless we can figure out what we want to do for storage, too, for the spot down here. How much was the shed? Like About four thousand dollars, ballpark. And then it was it's from the people who will that they will work with. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I the one the other folks I got um from the three thousand were less, but here's the you have to put it together and paint yeah. it. Well, this one <laughs> this one doesn't have the, this one is two thousand two hundred sixty nine. This is from Lowe's. Uh, delivery is at least $80, $79. You have to call and figure it out. No shingles or paint included, and you have to put it together yourself. <laughs> so that's that one. This one is from Tractor Supply, and it's $3,199.99, and it's not assembled or painted either. Um, so that's what I got, but I didn't know I needed those. So, yeah. yeah. And we really want. Because the wall puts it all in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I was going to say, yeah. Probably yeah. not nearly as strong as. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, does it make sense to put some kind of jet up off the parking lot and to at least have pass it over to Ron and it's going to keep going and we'll end up with the shed somehow? We need to... Well, the board's talking about it tonight. So, if, that, if there's any other solution that we I, want to... I'm, I'm personally fine with it. I mean, you're the first person to come with it. So, when the next people come and ask why you got one, hey, you were the first person who thought of it. So, hey, and that's how yeah, that's fine, right? There you go. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here denying anything. I think it's all, all good ideas. We do have to have a fun money. So, we're, we've been screaming to the town saying, come give us ideas and you can give us an idea. It's so, a great small idea for a great little group. Whatever, yeah. I mean. So do you still, do you want to do a little bit bigger one in the town transfer part and you get some, end up with some storage? Well, the, the question is the pay in part. I think it's the, I'm hearing that, but I don't know if it's shared purchase or ARPA, 100% ARPA. But if we do do 100% of them, maybe we say, maybe we do a bigger one and say a 16 by 10 or 12, and then say you guys get half of it, or, you know, and then the other half could be the town space, or I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't want to make the wrong decision here. I'm yeah. speaking out loud again, and I'm horrible about that. We need ideas. And that doesn't all have to be decided tonight. It just has to, yes, we're going to do something, and then Ron can look and Ron said he would take it on. I can tell you from the foundation point of view, whether you're putting an eight by eight or what, whether they're building the path for an eight by eight or a 16 by 16, there's no difference on their side. I can tell you that. So the cost, the cost is more in the shed and structure. Maybe we just look at that, right? You know, balance from the next meeting, yeah. have a proposed cost for a 16 by 16 yeah. and an eight by eight. So we can donate some storage to the rest of the communities. Committees. That's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's... And 16 by 16 is the max we can do. Are you happy to affirm the village? Yeah. Off the top of that. 
unless you had the highway crew build the big one. Yeah, Susan, Susan here, I think this would be a case of if we build it, they will come. Um, I have a big empty barn. You'd be amazed what's in that barn now. So I, I, I think it might be a great idea to build something that, you know, they've sort of brought up an issue, but I, I don't doubt that there would be other groups that might be able to benefit, not need that much space, but um, a little secure space can be very valuable to, to, a, to a small group. Yeah. Okay, so what is the official decision? Let's then? make a motion to move forward with Ron on a permit and have the community circle proposes with cost for the next meeting. Okay. For a bigger one? That's great. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> so do we need a motion for that? Or not no, really? Continue. Not really. Next meeting. Continue. Nope. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's like this. That's why I have done this at high school. All the baseball stuff in one person's house and basketball in another person's house and soccer. And so should we talk about right? Yeah, right. Well, right. <laughs> well, right. Highway crew, fifth person. Are we going to do that now? What? It's just getting a rent from the board. That's true. So we're, we're going to advertise right now. We have no internal applicants. Thursday, the external ad would start. The LCT, Boca Roads, newspaper. Okay. And then a couple of weeks from there, we'll get hopefully a pile of applications that somebody has to look at. So highway, usually one or two select board members. It's paw through them. So that's what that question okay. was. Is there a couple of people that want to be involved so that we can start to coordinate that? Season? One or two board members. Probably meet during the highways, you know, like late afternoon. Last time we did this, I think it was like end of their day, but not too late. Last time we did it, we were online. July. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you want sincere construction? Do you want to well, be involved sure. in that? Since I, you're I mean, familiar, depends on what time this is going to be. Well, true. Oh, well, you got plenty of time. Yeah, this is my start. Oh, Savannah's going to do it too. So there we go. Well, well so what, what is it? Are we all going to add three? three? We got to just have two. Like, do they have three? We have a board meeting. That's sure. That's fine. We'll warn as a board meeting. Oh, really? So, like, three? Like, being the leader's on our I'll be involved with whoever else will be involved. It'll, it'll be an after hour thing, or this will be a daytime. Well, I think whatever works for people, I think the idea was end of day, which is it's yeah, not for you. If it's in the day, I can do it. It just well, your day is evening. Yeah, I can't do it. It's, it's, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I can't do it. If it's evening, yeah. well, if, if you it's not really yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. And if you no. camp in Savannah, can yeah. yep, well, yep. How's I'll, that? That way, if you're busy, I, I trust. I trust them too enough. Anyways, if I'm not there, she's a new member. She can do stuff like this. <laughs> so. This guy right here is rolling and Matt and expanding the back of questions. Not like confidence. No. Hiring committee. Yeah. Hiring Line committee. With, with highway. Yeah. So, man, you have to start asking some more questions, though. Why? <laughs> okay. Thanks. I don't like that we're skipping around my agenda. It's stressing me out. You're, you're uh, well, not really. Okay, so now what are we doing? Now where are we going? On the road. Well, no, we were gonna yeah. get rid of you, I thought. The they're, they're Brian. Oh, they're Brian. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> you had your kid for three days, you know? <laughs> Hey, so our Brian machine broke, and I'm going to have Brian speak more to this because he's he called for assistance on troubleshooting, and so uh, a lot more. Yeah. We didn't do that last year. We're not going to come up with that. Can you start with what it is? Because I don't know. Right. All right. Make sure it's all right. yeah. okay. Start when you bought this. All right, when you bought this. Sorry. I don't even know what it is. Give these guys three guys. I lived with only about five years ago, four years ago. Brian is like That's a liquid, liquid salt. It's Earth liquid salt. salt. Yeah. Earth, so this is the new. So it's the new wave. Basically, it's this huge tub, 
Okay. We dump salt in there, dump water in there. It mixes it up till it gets to 23.3% concentration and it pumps it off. Okay. Mark puts it on his truck. It sprays on the salt as it comes off the truck onto the road. So it activates quicker. Okay. You can use less salt and it doesn't scatter on the road. And when you put it there, it stays on the road. Do you use chloride? If it's really cold out. You know, very seldom. Very, 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 very seldom. Like what do you very use? seldom you use chloride. Once this year. So you use chloride after the brine is mixed. No. 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 No chloride at all. Just salt. Just salt. Just salt, water. salt brine. Salt and salt water. Well, what's the material that you put in the tank? Is it rock or liquid? Rock, or rock salt. No, just rock. The rock salt. goes into like a jacuzzi tub. Best way to explain it. Jacuzzi tub just keeps mixing it. And it, it turns it, 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 to it, 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 it dissolves. It dissolves down to salt right. water. Right. Also, it's okay. a big agitator. Okay. Just keep spraying water. Goes from the top to the bottom. So it's off to the bottom. Okay. And then it has a computer in there and it tells when it gets to 23.3 is the perfect number, gotcha. I guess you want to call it. Okay. Where it won't freeze and and then it pumps it off to the outside tank. So, so it's all computerized. We bought this one five years ago, right? I was, Let's yeah. say eighteen thousand back in. We paid eighteen grand for that one. Well, well, yes, no. I thought yeah, we paid like no, twelve grand, but then we no, had thirteen to buy all the pump station. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot more setup to the, the total setup. Right, the total cool. setup with the trucks. We had to put stuff in the trucks and, and all the pipe in. Right, else. all the plumbing. So we had a guy come last year because we we're having issues with it, and he came up. He said, "I'm going to tell you." He said, it's kind of like your cell phones or laptops. It's computerized. Every 10, 12, 15 years, it's outdated. He says, you're on your last, he said, it's, you're pushing the limits. He said, it, he said, we don't have no more support for this machine yeah, of course. because it's outdated. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't even know how old it is. We bought it used. Oh. So it's old. Well, your brand new ones are 112,000. Oh. Okay. So, and we bought it for 13,000 13, oh. from St. Albans. So. so, it probably was pretty old. Yeah. And they wanted 20. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we had issues again this year, and I called him up, and he's like, I can come out for $4,000, but he says, pretty, pretty much you need an upgrade. You need to upgrade the system. Okay. He says, like your cell phones, like your computers, every so many years, they're junk. You just need to upgrade the system switches. We got the call. I got uh, so there is one in there. This is going to be a whole new system, right? No, uh, no, no. He's no, this is just computer. all the the computer board and modules and the modules. They replace all that. We keep our tub. We keep our panel. Tubing pipes, pipes, yeah. tubing, oh, everything, yeah. all that stuff. This is the automated that you're right. The this is the guts of the computer, yeah. pretty much. Right, basically the computer system part of it. Yeah. Right. Can we get a hand crank? Trust me, I did it by I did it manually for a little while to get to finish it off. Yeah, it's not very easily. <laughs> you shouldn't have ever said you did it. <laughs> um, so this quote is good 60 days. 44,928. Wow. Brand new one for 112,000 because she did price me that one. <laughs> it's 44,928.43. That's that's installed. Brand new one was how much? Like 111, 12,000 dollars. 112, I think. Um, is that the only quote you got by chance? You get a couple quotes. Is that the only company that does so this? So, how much this, salt, this, Mark, do you think this is you'll you save a year by doing this? A lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, saying it works. A lot um, is a truck load. A lot is two truck loads. So a lot is um, tonnage. It's hard to hard to say exact. I mean, did we ever get well? The, how much did the price did go? We ever get the tonnage on that when we first Mark first started? 
Um, I looked just to see <laughs> about tonnage, and at that time, it was dollars. So I think dollars is easier right now. It relates to tonnage. We had 90,000, 2019, we had $90,000 in the winter salt budget to meet the demands there. And sometimes we get close to that because there's or so over. much. I remember a lot of years we went over by 10,000. Yeah, so we can't even go over 10,000. We were seeing max there and the price is probably at least 30% cheaper back then too than it is today. So back in 2019, and then it's from the board discussion that said Mark was hoping to see a 30% savings in that $90,000 with the brine. So it's not, it wasn't incorporating the brine, it was just trying to lower the salt usage at that time from 90,000 to 60,000, which is about where we are today, even with price increases. Yeah. So the, huge price increase. But we had a huge, huge price increase last year. Right. So I think from that perspective, what, what we didn't do, which we should have done, is looked at these kind of costs coming up and what the brine actually cost. We didn't, but we didn't really know either. I mean, we didn't know we were going to need to do this every this 15 years or whatever. I was just going to ask what if they know how long this. He says ten, every, uh, every 10 or 15 years, he okay. says you're going to need to upgrade your system. Yeah. What they got told me. And crap. So I was like, I think it was and Doug, and I think Doug Earl spread her up there. <laughs> With the old bell. <laughs> so. I still ain't got an answer on how many tons. We're we selling. don't know how many tons. We you can't. You can't really go with the difference of one. It's hard to go with tons. Like it's hard to instead of running eight hundred pounds per mile, I'm running half four hundred most time now. So that about half and nine times out of ten, I've been running four hundred. Well, what did the price go up last year? Nineteen dollars a ton. Yeah, yeah, just built. and our and our salt budget yeah. never increased, did it? No. And we still got money left over in our slot budget. So, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to find that. Well, it's hard. Every winter is different, it is. too. I mean, so, I mean, do, it's you have to do like really... a five year average. Yeah. Well, um, the, problem, average. the problem that Mark was trying to solve back then was in the pure quantity being applied that was unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> So that was the problem. It wasn't necessarily a okay. detailed scientific study. I mean, we've got we to, knew that there was too much salt being put down. Gotcha. So okay. we, we've got it down pretty good now. The first two, three years was a learning curve on all but, of it. I, you know, for me, I could have still learn, you know. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you, but if we I can mean, put out more brine than we can physically put out right now, having the truck itself, we could cut back more. I know that in my head. It just we're not at that point. I mean, we've done. Everything as cheap as we could, you know, all the tanks in our truck we got for free. In the state. Yeah. You know, like um, we we've done a lot of stuff to get this the cheapest way to to prove. Well, yeah. to prove and to learn ourselves yeah. without giving the town taxpayers a huge cost, not knowing if it's gonna work. You know, I'm seeing it's working, it's working, where it is more value to invest in it because it does save a lot. Yeah. Well, how many towns have lowered their salt budget? Is this really? a common it's thing awesome. in all, all the towns? Like, do no, we're the only town in the state, I think. Really? The state has them. The state because they're too expensive. Uh, right, because I mean, you got obviously we, the Melbourne's have them. Not anymore. No. Uh, oh, they, they got rid of it. They got rid of it too. Because they all went. Their old foreman went to St. Johnsbury. He really wished he knows they were getting rid of it. Um, <laughs> it's really fun to say. They got rid of it because they had to keep a lot of the parking rights guys busy in the wintertime, so they went to five fifties. Then they couldn't do it with the five fifties because it's too much weight. Um, I'm trying to look up percentage. I was going to say that you think they'd be able to tell you, well, like when they're selling this, like what they predict that you can save. Oh, they say well, 30 you know what I mean? well, they do say it depends on what your equipment is. So if I only have a three and a half gallon per minute pump, right? You and I'm only carrying, pump. say, uh, 80 gallons of salt brine, well, okay. the state half the back of that truck is nothing but salt brine, so they can pump it out. Sure. I could. Go from you know fit shell. I come back and load up. I can't do that. I physically gotcha. Can't carry enough brine. At this point, give the, the next savings. You know, if I could get like an insert in the truck and run half salt brine, half salt on the, on the load itself, then we can pump out one center road and I can 
cut way back. But so we're, just, we're, be, we're doing everything baby steps, and we're really not at that point yet. Gotcha. Okay. Because it wouldn't be worth going up to Center Road, have to come back to shop, reload, go to Garfield, right. come back, reload, go to the road, road, come yeah. back. Yeah. Load, we're just trying to yeah. get that right. How many gallons it take me to get geared to the right You know, and try to play it that way. So that we need for that one truck needs more carrying capacity for sure. Which when we replace that truck, you can do that. Yeah, and you can look at it. It's just it's if you didn't have this thing, it's gonna cost you thirty thousand dollars more in salt ish. Perhaps. Potentially, yeah. And so this Correct. is forty five thousand dollars, and we can get more years out of this. Brian, remember how many years okay. Kenny came in for ten thousand dollars more in salt budget? <laughs> You got to realize <laughs> two o'clock in the morning when water was running down the road, there was a lot of wasted salt there. Well, yeah, and you don't get that now. I mean, I try we're not, not, we're not bowing our road. I get a little but, upset when I see white. I go back in the 80s when I see the river running down the road. I when it's 10 below zero. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Let's talk money. So say what's 40, say so 15, 15 years. How much is that a year, roughly? $3,000. Oh, you're figuring yeah. some stuff? Okay, I'll wait then. Okay. So say that's 15 years. We don't even know how old that machine is, actually. Okay. Can I ask a question while you guys are all thinking? Yes. How many area towns around us use the same system that uh, we use? Do we know? Towns? Johnson? Nobody uses the same system. Really. Well, oh, no, they don't have no. no. The brine, no one, just the state. There's some. But... Well, I don't say so, no one. I shouldn't say no one because I don't really know that. The state used but... to <laughs> pretty wet. State used they know it's bad. They got had a bunch of additives they don't do anymore either. They don't. No, they're strictly salt brine. That's where salt brine got its bad name as the additives. It wasn't the salt brine. Is, the state used to use molasses but, and all this other crap. And you never put, you have to splash them off your tires from the salt. Free salt. It, then, That's then then the salt never brine. stored, it's never on our salt. So the state used to put molasses in the Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. I just took a before and after snapshot. Okay. Pretty good information, but, you know, round it up a little bit. Okay. 2016. Spent ninety three thousand at eighty one dollars a ton, and he was twelve hundred tons used. And FY twenty two, spent fifty four thousand six hundred at seventy point fifty cents per ton at seven hundred seventy four tons last year. Not twenty three. We're in twenty three. So last year was seven hundred seventy four tons. Wow. That's almost five hundred tons. No, like 400. Yeah, 400, 425. Almost 500 times. Wow. Almost 500 times, I think. Answer your question. But yeah. But everyone is different. Right. right now. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's, 16, that's when it's compared to 16, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, I would say that's. Yeah. 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 And we did it 16. So. And this year, we, you know, this year is going to be just because of the price. You know, we don't, right, we're, we're not allowed to that same amount of tonnage now because, you know, there's a huge price increase, obviously. So then we don't. About $30,000 a year savings. Just look at salt costs. We didn't roll in the 5000 a year right. in the replacement of this stuff. But if you want to look at the true cost, you could probably say, Add ten thousand in for the brine machine and the replacement of those things, plus your labor to keep it going and inspections and take it off. The third. It really, I mean, now it doesn't really take that long to make. We got what, five thousand gallons of storage. It don't take that long now. Now that we got it figured out and working right. It's a, it's a. Yeah, I mean, looks so like a lab technician when he gets here. <laughs> <laughs> 
door. <laughs> okay. So I don't think it's cost reduction. Just on the costing things, we're definitely saving over prior practices. And the thing that you all need to be aware of is just how you maintain that stuff. Do we have 150,000 to replace that thing, or are we always going to be able to do the 45,000 dollars repair? No, that's another question. Um, the problem is right now we don't have the the money. We got 20,000, and the rest is going to have to come somewhere. So my next my next question is, what's that truck going to cost us this year? That truck we got. Mark's truck run over. Can you even order that truck? No, he's talking about the one, the mishap we had two weeks ago. It's going to be all insurance. Did we find out what, what's going on there? Is it going to be $1,000? Huh? Should be $1,000. For the, it's going to be an insurance claim. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. might, it might be $30,000, but it'll be $1,000 to the taxpayers. Right. Okay. I guess it's up to everybody else. It's what she did. She told me before she gave me this price. She called me and she's like, "I just want you to know that I was informed yesterday that there's going to be a price increase at the end of the week." You got to make a decision ASAP. <laughs> but sixty days. It's sixty days. I, I, hate, that. Days. I hate that too. But yeah. everyone says it now. It's crazy. Yeah. Both but right. she said this is sixty days. Yeah. So you got sixty yeah. days with this bolt right here. When was the bolt given? Uh, March 16. You want to think about it? Yeah, I do. I, I mean, you want to think about it? I got it. I got a question. I mean, I, I, I think funds can be useful. Now, what? Arbor funds can be useful. They could be. Yep. Yeah, I think we have about 20,000, again, that same 20,000 savings in the budget, which, which is all, which could be used. And then you have 25 missing, basically. Okay. We can make a decision in two weeks and Matt wants some time to think about it. What are you going to I don't. I don't think. I, I think it makes sense because I don't know where you get the money. I don't know that part. Of it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, well, we'll have a better it, idea. It, two weeks. It, probably have a better have idea. A it it just, just makes sense. We'll know. We'll know more about the twenty thousand being left in June thirty. Closer we get to June thirty, that's true. As you get through the highway budget and make sure you don't have anything odd happening. That twenty thousand mm -hmm. money left over should be reserved. Right, I understand that part, but they don't. Whether there's twenty five in other parts of the, I don't. Know. We don't. That's too early for that. But delay will let us see what the operating budget can handle. And Brian's right that the ARPA money can be used for that. Thing. Mm -hmm. ARPA money is real, relatively unrestricted. I think it makes complete sense. If you don't, you're going to spend thirty thousand in salt. So. Right. Yeah. I think the concept is: you're Do you want to keep your equipment up? Price. Yeah. 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 You have all your answers. Mm -hmm. Answer. You know, question mm -hmm. answer. That's what. That's what you're. I mean, no. a simple so, analysis would be good too. You know, a simple comparison, just have that on paper. Hey, this is what we saved. This is what we're looking at, so that we can have some justification behind it. I, I would appreciate. I think I don't think we've done an update up here real cost anyway. So this is like the first time we've looked at a you know a number, but we can write it up and make it look nice. At least you could you could go to Marshall, sweep up their salt, and bring it back to us. Higher. <laughs> They're heavy. There's oh. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to discuss this at the next meeting. April 11th. April 11th. Okay. Rod and Mark are going to, is going to have an analysis right. for it. Right. Just to understand the savings, understand a better understanding where we're at with our cell budget. And then maybe, I mean, I don't know if we have to finance this over two years if it makes sense or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Or we, we at least propose what we need to pull out of our book. At least we have real numbers, you know? Because right now we could approve twenty five thousand and still be a short call of three thousand. I have to revisit it again in two weeks. To beg for another three thousand on our book. Two weeks. So they got. They got two months. Ryan said she said. So you got days. until. Got until April. May you got until I would say May first. I give you a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so two weeks. May first. You got until yeah. May first to give decide. Better numbers for the tax right. Got it. Okay, moving along. Review mowing request proposal. Hold on, one more question before you move on. I'm going to have to meet you at the fire station sometimes. So, uh, about this management for looking at a shower for the fire department up there. So, kind of put your head together on that. I'll give you a call or you can give me a call. Okay. We're going to have to be able to stock some. Um, you better build a bigger shed. 
Huh? You better build a bigger <laughs> tent. <laughs> you know, I, can you, I can tell you, we ain't got no storage up there. I feel like I got a two car no, garage up here for your dog. Yeah. Things that I got to come up with that it's going to make it for the emergency management. Emergency management. Shall we? We'll be fully rolled up tomorrow. Where are you? Go yeah, to Marshall. You go to Marshall and look at Marshall. Station. Yeah. 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 An air fire station. We're there in the middle of so you don't remember that. We already don't know what, what's going on there. Oh, it's so, all. They got coffee. Oh, they got meat. Take that. Sorry, I already crossed it off. It's not, it's not, it's not this week, technically, it's not going on. I need to chat and come back. Okay. No, it's good. It's always good. Okay. okay. That's right. I'm good. I skipped one. We're going to talk about the assessor working flexible hours request. Appreciate it. So that request is mostly from me. Okay. Um, the town of Johnson and either my job description or personnel policy, I can't remember which one, says that you're supposed to work between eight and four, Monday through Friday. And if you want to work excessive hours outside of that, like 6 a.m., 5 p.m., whatever, Supposed to get slow for Google. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm asking you folks if I can because I can ask Johnson, but since we're contracted through, you know, Hyde Park and Johnson, I need to come to you. Okay. So I'm mostly looking to be able to work like after four. Okay. Like before the meeting to get some other work done or you know weekends if possible. Um, also the property. Transfer tax returns are backlogged to November of 2022. Most towns are pretty current in that. So thank you very much. Um, so also wondering if I can work additional hours in this month to try to catch up with all that so we can be current moving forward. And we probably need to get current. Yeah, right. Need, right. I mean, des I mean, it's due, like Terry said, correct? This yeah, yeah. is all snapshot, linked to the same thing. A snapshot is April first, but I think you, there's some wiggle room to getting things up for things. So there's there's a bunch of work in the next four weeks, probably, and then then we get to grievances and notices, okay, and hearings that for be involved. And then you'll have help and yeah, there's a big rush right now. So I we okay. just because we pushed the start so late. We were anticipating a delay and a bunch of work at once, so it's not really a budgetary issue. We knew that was going to have to happen for statutory compliance, right? And the whole system is based schools, tax, town, everything's based on this cycle. So if we don't catch up, then we have to delay tax billing, which we call a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I think just hearing the report that we're going to get caught up is comfortable, you know, comfortable. exactly. <laughs> we, weren't sure, we weren't sure, we don't need emotion on that. No, I think it's already in process. I think okay. he's properly letting you know that things are getting busy. You'll see an invoice at some point from Thomas Johnson with all these hours, and that's that's why. Okay, okay. okay. And yeah, they make that if I go over that yeah. average of eight hours, we we get Google for that additional yeah. hours. Okay. So, yeah. I think we always have this cycle of high hours and low hours sure. after day. Yeah. Okay. But I think I think Johnson specifically asked for a vote of the select board to allow flexible time. Oh, so we do need a vote. Yeah, I mean, no, both no. the board has to vote that issue. Not okay. The, not the, stuff. the actual flexible, flexible hours. Okay. Can we have a motion for that? Do we really need that? Johnson requires it. Because he's I'm a Johnson employee. Okay. And they bill us because we have okay. joint. That's why. But no, Hyde Park doesn't. But it's a communication <laughs> thing we get for what words. Did Johnson approve it? We're pretending, right? We're pretending. Yeah. I asked Brian and I haven't heard back from Johnson for the extra hours. I don't have currently don't have access to the assessor room unless they're open. So I need to get security codes. Here I have access to everything but the ball. Gotcha. So it's easier for me to, and they don't have a backlog like you have here. Right. Because Johnson bills us for his time. Oh, that he I totally understood that. I oh, okay. Thank you. It, is he asking for flexible hours only here? Yes. And, and Johnson. Correct. And Johnson is wanting us to yeah. approve it. Both correct. Yep. Yes. Yep. Correct. I'm not, I'm not late. Yeah. Just making sure I'm understanding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all right with it. Can we have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We're all in eyes. She said aye. She said aye. 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 
She's on the tablet. Are you out in the ocean? She's at the bar. Not quite. Not quite. Almost. Sitting on your deck. That margarita you got was like that. That's that's why I had to get rid of the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, review mowing request for proposals. I probably dug this way too deep on this one. Sorry. It's actually it's coming out okay. The, the cemetery commissioners are on board. They really want to get rid of some of their administrative things like bidding mowing. Uh, Amy called from library to very put us on there that they want the option. They're not committed to signing a contract, but they want the trustees to model the option. Yep. Uh, the village was thinking about it. I asked them if they wanted to include the village properties, and they said a little short notice for us, but send us the RFP so we can look at it. So they have all the information they have. The um, if anybody's interested in looking at the re bid result, they'll be hit here on the 25th. I mean, before the 25th. So if you want to look at them, then we can just have them available here. I don't know what we're going to get. We yeah. Can, we can get one or we can get seven. But okay. That's that's part right here. She did. So Matt should have time to schedule to look at what we get. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I've, I've, I saw this coming in at the email. I've, I have talked to a couple of people that are interested in having us send and giving proposals. So you're sending this out. Or, or it's a paper on, my, on Thursday. Yeah. And we'll post it on the website. I'll, I have to make sure it gets in the paper before posting on the website. If I have to change something, I have to remove everything. Um, if it goes on the newspaper, then we'll see that. Is there is there a link somewhere where I can forward the link? Yeah, that'll be on the website. Okay. And it'll, it'll be and, and that's okay for me as a like we're not to yeah, the more okay. information out there, the yeah. better. Yeah. Unless you're a bowling company or something. No right. <laughs> On your site, on your spare time. Yeah. That, that was just more of a notice and a reaction idea. Okay. Um, rules of procedure. Those are right here. Okay. Um, y'all made the motion to accept them at the previous meeting. So if you want, you can just sign them, I believe. Okay. You should sign those. Second page. Okay. There you are. Local, I might as well move along while we're signing, right? Local emergency management plan. Like rolling. Rolly, what you got for us? What do you want? <laughs> All sorts of stuff. A shower at the fire station, apparently. Well, <clears throat> <laughs> we we're gonna have to do something. This up to what we do to make it a legal emergency management spot. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, we're gonna have to have a shower. Okay. We're gonna have to have cots. And that's one thing I'll come back with the, the next meeting because I'll meet with Brian and, okay. and, and Brent or, or John or somebody I'll meet with to see what it's gonna take to. You know, get us in the spot there because Marshall just they just done this. We got the generators, you know, so we're good there. And it's going to be up to you guys how much you want to really do because <laughs> it's it's there. So we could do like we could look at both fire stations and see we, which one's better or we, we actually, you know, like um which we call it come in from the oh, Sterling View. Sterling View. Um, Paul. Something. Paul. Paul. Paul come in and you know he's got a good thing down there. Right. You know, and, and we probably should look at that too. Okay. Because I, I hold reservation on that one because it's not a town property site. The but town, the town has no jurisdiction over it later on. Yeah. I, I, if we start over, I mean, yes, it would, but you could, but you got to have some place. If all of a sudden all that power went out down there, you had a big storm, um, you know, that people could huddle into that you know, emergency yeah. center there. But this Thank is you. what we got to talk about. 
And I think Paul's going to meet with the Red Cross to go down the list mm -hmm. the Red Cross has. I think he's sort of doing that on his own, right. though. I don't right. think he's going with you or anything. I no, I, I was going to get a hold of the thought of it. But the town could have two roles to play. One, coordinate with Roland as he, mm -hmm. he emerges management director. So we know what capacity is there, what they need, and Roland might have right. state right. resources. Right. Right. The second part is the um, part of money. Okay. So there's two two parts, even though we want to own the stuff. Right, right, right. There's two. And, 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 and it's getting to the point now where these firemen are dealing with so much hazardous material and stuff. It'd be nice to have a shower right there. They could shower themselves right there. I don't know. That's true, that. too. Oh, yeah. Good point. So, <clears throat> it, it it can work around the whole system, but you guys have one more show. They just the one. They just yeah. <laughs> like just yeah. It's nice. They had two bathrooms, a male and female, and they just made one big bathroom. Oh, with a shower. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. That all has to be handicapped, accessible. Yeah. Oh, of course, yep. right. So something we can come back with and see what Brent thinks and see what Ryan thinks and see what John thinks or whatever and, mm -hmm. and we'll work it out and you know and this deal like Ryan said <clears throat> where are we going to store the cops you know yeah right <laughs> You know, they don't have no room up there. I got to talk to Brent about that. Yeah. You know, so if we could start out with, you know, half a dozen to each place, mm -hmm. you know, maybe wrong idea or been on the storage shed, maybe I don't know. I know. Suddenly that shed needs to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> like you said. Yeah. Yeah. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> this is where we are. Is there a certain amount of cots you need to have or no, no you're gonna have just a handful, like. Um, um, I didn't know if it was like a percentage of your population. I don't think uh, I've ever been in Hyde Park, but Morseville has like lofts kind of, and that's where a lot of their storage is, is up in the well, we don't do Hyde Park, but it's full. You, you've been storing stuff up here for 60 years now. But yeah. <laughs> Maybe economics would be one of those locations or something. Is there room for one? Like economics? Where? Like a conic at the fire station? It definitely is in North Lake Park. North Lake Park definitely has one. You butt, butt it up to the building, you're right now. Yeah, I know. So this is There's another a... ongoing. This is going to be a big thing, isn't it? Well, not really. I mean, you know, Marshall so did it pretty easy. Oh, but it's just, I shouldn't say just a shower, but. A shower is like the biggest, and then cots is that kind of pretty much it. it? Has to be handicap accessible, right? Of course. You know, now you got to talk to Ryan yet. I don't want to put any. I've got a mind of what can be done up there, but they're going to lose that office as you walk into the lap. Oh uh, yeah, they got their office over back here. Yeah. So I'm going to tear that out here, and I don't know what North Lake Park's got. Sure. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll come back with some more. Okay. Uh, when, are, to when are you meeting with them? Who are you meeting with? Right. The fire chiefs, Ryan from Hyde Park and Brent right. and John from well, North Hyde John, Park. Yeah. John Savage, right? Yeah. John Savage. Brent, right. Brent does. And Brent. Brent will have good insight. <laughs> and Brent is. Brent Lamp here. Northside Park Fire Department. Assistant Fire Chief. So the local emergency management plan needs a vote. It's been updated by Don Archbold, who's the emergency management um, coordinator. Roland's looked at it, because I emailed it to him. And the state of Vermont had some edits mid-year last year, which we made because we had an extra position that they didn't like, like a deputy EMD or something. They said, that doesn't compete with our system. So we got rid of that. Anyway, so the, those it's rated to be approved. Then it has to be filed in the state of Vermont every um, April. So we're a little ahead of that. But that was what we're talking about fire 
trucks have, I think it made it in the meeting, right? That we, that North High Park did sell one of their truck engines to, they're selling it. They made the sale. They're on, they're on ease of use when it comes to their combined yeah. <laughs> share. Yeah, I, well, Brent sent me the purchase sale agreement and it was a decent deal. It's, I think May 1 or so, they're supposed to deliver it out to Iowa. Right. Somehow. When they originally proposed it to the two select boards, Eden and High Park, the trading value was like 50 grand, right? And I think he just sold it for 120 ish. Yeah. So and it's going to cost four grand to get it delivered out there. Yeah. I so yeah, it, was it was about a $35,000 savings to each town. So it made sense to make it happen and spoke with both fire stations, talked to Ryan, and Ryan's willing to make sure that he's mutual aid and then. They're bouncing off each other. So the only issue will be if Ryan's truck goes down in the meantime or whatever, then we'll be short and be yeah. dependent on Johnson. Do we need a motion on that emergency? No. Yeah. yeah. So the LEMP needs a motion. The, the fire truck, I think at some point, rent will be back to the board to talk about the net proceeds. In the past, the select boards of both towns, Eden and High Park, had to decide do we put that trade or sale value against the new truck, buy more parts for the truck that we may have taken out of the original order, or put the money into the fire reserve for the next truck. So all that. Yeah, but that's a that's a dollar amount decision that both boards usually make. Sometimes the same decision, sometimes they're not. We each have our own fire reserve budgets. So yeah, a motion on LEMP would be good for 2023. Really, do you want to make that since you read it and okayed it? I'll make it <laughs> motion for the emergency management. What was that number? The L L L T L E L P for 2023 for 2023. Do I have a second? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, it's there no restrictions. <laughs> old new business. What do we got? I've got some old business. Okay. What you got for us? Um, three of you members were here a year and a half ago when I came in. Del Rose. On the development of my father, and I don't have one yet. And I've already paid for a road sign, but in the meantime, the road name got changed at no fault of our own voice. And I paid for the old sign, and I'd like to know one and let the town pay for it. This was for well, it's called refresh my memory. It's no. It's now Dairy Haven Road or Lane. I don't know the Okay. It was Old Byron Road. That's right. And 911 took that away from us after we've had it for seven years. That's right. Now I remember. And we had a name before that. And the only reason we lost that name was because it wasn't recorded in the town and it was given to somebody else. That's right. So I paid for a road, <laughs> for Old Byron Road, paid for a sign. And in the meantime, it got changed. So I'd like the town to pay for the new sign and have it put up because I know what's going to happen is somebody will go get a permit, build a house, and then we'll get delayed because there's no road sign. So we need a road sign, correct? Yeah, yeah that's smart. He's, he's got all the orders. Let's we'll see why we can't pay for it. I know, I don't either. Well, it's something he's already paid for. It. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we paid for the old. Yeah, old yeah. Old. We didn't get it, right? paid. Well, I think they actually got that sign, but then the, that road name was taken away from us by the nine one one book because it was too similar to something. Else. Yes, too similar. That's what I'm remembering now. But we picked it because it overlooks the oldest town and the oldest barn in town. town. Yeah. But so now we picked this other name. That one has been approved. What Dairy Haven Road. Dairy Haven Road. Dairy Haven Road. Is it road or lane? There you go. I think it's real. Yeah. It's going to be that much. I was going to say $45 don't break the bank. But we need to make sure it gets put up. Gets put up. 
Right. I just wanted that because there's talk of, because of all the lots are spoken for. So oh. I just want to make sure that if anybody decides to build it, there's no delay because of that. Exactly. Let's get the road sign up. Okay. We will do that. Now, it's going to ask the question what's the justification was for a fifth person, but I guess you can run the hand pump on the front of it. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> would that mean something like somebody would say that you it's on the board? <laughs> well, I haven't mentioned any names. Oh, goodness. But back to the justification, there is lots. You want to speak to that? And, and are the three seasonal is not going to be hired? That's the other question. The what the three seasonal workers that we have the temp workers the temp, the temp workers. workers they're talking about they're talking about maybe six weeks of somebody being mowing because that's still they've always had that Brian when they had the the fifth man drive a truck or something they always had you know try to get that six weeks of mowing out of out of their hair you know. What I'd like to see, and it didn't happen last year, and I'll be honest with you, you tell me if I'm wrong, is to stockpile that sand up there and then hire a couple of tandems to haul it down here and get it done in a couple of weeks instead of passing off all summer long. Because we could be doing a lot of ditching and we could be doing a lot of other things if we could stop that hauling sand all summer long. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to figure it out, right? Well, I had a couple tandems last year at $95 an hour. And you could hire a tandem last year for $25 an hour, or $95 an hour, you were doing good. And it never got that. But if we can stockpile that sand up there and get everybody on the same page, we can have that sand down here in a, in, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think you could definitely get them faster. I think and get on to our other stuff, our ditching, the road stuff, you know. But I I don't, you know, your fifth man, you're gonna put your fifth man on, which they really need a fifth man up there, but um they won't have an extra man in the winter. But I'd like to see six weeks of somebody mowing the roadside to help park out there because usually it's blames in a truck and you know dale's been mowing so you got you know and then reno leaves in about april maybe okay? reno leaves in about april so that would uh, take care of so you're thinking it would eliminate two of those seasonal or it, it would be one seasonal person Unless you'd want somebody to drive truck, well, it's, he still has Blaine to drive truck in the summer hauling sand. But if we can hire a couple tandems and get this stuff done, you know, get everybody on the same page and get it done, that you you would need to hire an extra man for the summer. You'd have just one full time guy, the fifth guy. So should we move along to the town staffing plan now that we're talking about the fifth man? Or any opposition on it, Brian? All right. Sorry. 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 The fifth man. I just worry about when you're hiring new employees, it's an additional expense every single year. Benefits go up, pay goes up. It's just because Morris goes in an awful volume because they that was part of the reason that their budget skyrocketed because their pays increased a huge amount because they got so many employees that just worried about that. Oh, okay. That's it's a fair statement. Because we hired two <laughs> new employees this year, the town did, two additional ones. And, and that just, this would be another one. That's a concern. Just trying to be able to live here. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Wait, two additional? <laughs> well, you hired Justin. Oh, right. And uh, what was the other one? Planning. Huh? Planning's in the budget. With the highway tank. Can you talk about Jen too? Yeah, Jen. No, she was she was no. not new. Yeah, she, she was new. That, no, that was the accounting position. Right. Yeah, no. I mean, good. we've only hired once since I've been on the board. It was um Wells for the highway. Oh, he's talking right. about Jen. Additional. Additional. Oh, additional. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's talking like Jen was here. Right, right. right. But yeah, no, Jen was Ali previously. Oh, and so yeah, that's okay. the position she took. That was just my concern. Yeah. Because employees are, you, you can't stop it. It's additional expense. Every single year goes up every year. Absolutely. But with, with the, the fifth guy up there, we pretty much had all season long. We had one in the winter time. We right. had no temps. We've had we've yeah. had double temps. Yeah. So I, I talked with I talked with past board members 20 years ago. And Ken says that we always had five in this town and then we made a reduction. Right. And he said that this this town does justify five in his opinion. So I I just asked somebody that had been here 20 years ago and we used to have a five. Oh no kidding. I didn't know. Well, yeah, quite a while ago. Yeah. There was always back in the day five on the where now we've been back kind of running back. four with three counts or four counts. Back in the day, the residents used to take care of their own section of road. <laughs> 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 well, and, and let's be honest, the other people in the state, I mean, we talked about this earlier, the state is the state is calling yeah. for so much more addition, you're calling for so much more. You've got a four-man crew, if two of the guys are on the ground flagging, one guy's in the excavator, one guy's in the truck, you got an awful lot of sitting around the time waiting for your truck to come back. So unless we start subbing that out, but then at $95 an hour, subbing that out, it doesn't take long to pay for the thing. So what you're saying is the state's all our problems. Well, I'm telling you, they ain't helping me work in that day. I think, I think uh, when, when the fifth man gets on board, I think it will be a good. And and Mark is Mark is running around sometimes with his head cut off. I mean, you know, he's got a complaint here, he's got a complaint there. You know, you got to go see this one. Well, you tore my door here. You know, you didn't black top my door. You know, it's no, it's it's. It's it's a never ever ended thing for him, and it would help him a lot. Or like we just talked, if one person goes out grieving, yeah, you can't do any ditching. Right. So, so, so find us a good candidate, would you? And, and then you have vacations <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> Need a job? I don't know to do. <laughs> Are you still about? You guys okay? okay. Go, so go. go. 300 for C. 800? No, I have 1300, but I'm not an 800. Oh my lord. What are you doing here? I know, right? I'm ready for bed. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. In your packets, I think okay. there was a uh, cover memo for the meeting from the meeting that summarized. Exactly. There was, there was so many things happening that I wanted the board to just see it, I guess, yep. all in one place. And I think it's good good to do once in a while. Like mm -hmm. Matt will say, Hey, I've been here for a year. I never knew we did that. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Deal. So it's like, how many staff do you have? Do you know what they do? Right. You know, do you want to meet with staff more personally? You know, so I, that's one of the things we do with Jennifer. Was to ask her to communicate regularly with you so you knew what was sort of happening yep. from her position. If that position is quiet, you really don't know what's going on, but you can get a report. But I think the memo, you know, the little outline and highlights is really good communication. She doesn't need to be at the meeting, but at least she's communicating. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's, and that's the same thing when we're talking about the assessors. You know, one of the things we wanted to do, at least between the two towns, was not to just say, Oh, Justin and Terry are taking care of it. Um, is for the time the administrators to meet on a regular basis between the towns to do the same thing. Okay. So we put all the, I put all those things in the list on the staff packet so that you could just see it, ask questions. But there's all sorts of stuff happening in there. Some of it's happened, like Jennifer, some of it's new, like Justin, and some of it's proposed, like the fifth highway person and the planning and zoning person. So I don't know if you have any questions on all that, plus my retirement's mixed in there and what you all want to do after June. So that's, I mean, there's lots of moving parts there. I think it's all going to be fine as long as we keep talking about it and everybody raises concerns and puts it on the table and doesn't hold it and say, oh, you should have thought about this two months ago. Well, you had a great idea two months ago. We, we could have used that idea. So I guess that's my opening. I don't really have any 
direction on this topic, but I did want to make sure we're talking about it because there's a lot of things in, in the mix right now. Are we going to be going into executive session strength for any reason? Don't know yet. Okay. Um, I actually was asking, so when Kim was returning, do we have a date? Is This is the end of June. Can, you guys, I can, when you want to talk about it, um, I had a long talk with Kim Sunday. Oh, okay. And, okay, and we do not need to go into executive session. I think these are all things that, as, as again, as Rhonda says, putting all this stuff out there, um, this is now and talking with Kim, and I'm and um, I wanted to have a, a, a conversation with Kim first before we sort of put put this out here and thinking about it. So if we're if we're ready for that part, I'll I'll go for it. You ready? You guys okay with that? Sure, go ahead, Susan. Okay. Um, Kim Kim called me. Um, uh, let's see. Kim called me Sunday, and um, and we had a uh, we had a good chat. She had just recently checked in with her doctors again, and um, I'd say God bless her for remaining in, in good spirits. She is, um, her immunity is now back to basically nothing, the same thing as it was when she went in for the surgery. Um, they're, they're discovering that part of her, um, part of the complication is apparently her body, because she's on who knows how many, you know, different medications for a variety of things. And her body, it apparently is terribly sensitive to all these drugs. So it, it kicks off a whole bunch of bad side effects. Now, not the, I mean, she's had some where she stands up and she's so dizzy, she falls down and she passes out. So they're having to again, the net result being at this point with those sorts of, of issues and trying to sort out what she needs for medication, that she has zero immunity. The doctors have right now, um, they're saying for the next, the, the insurance papers that they filed is that for the next three months, she should do no work on the disability insurance that she'd been on before, which has now run out. Um, she was doing 20% of, uh, of, in theory, she was doing 20% of her job. Um, we, we just talked about, again, this is so her, her, her goal, her hope, her doctor's hope is that in the end of the next three months, so we go April, May, June, so the end of June, um, she can come back in some, in, in some fashion. Um, she said they had always her ideas in returning back to work is that she would still have to be very careful. So she'd have to be masked, but no one else in the office would have to be masked. She says, she, you know, that isn't, that isn't realistic. Um, she is, again, who knows what's going to happen in the next three months. But that runs into it's kind of like with the assessors and the listers. Um, the end of June, you get and you're getting to the taxes, the end of the tax year, a lot of work has to be done. She has said she's hopefully again that some of her immune system is back, that she could talk with Krista and like they could come in and both be masked and work on Saturdays or, or come up with something. So we so we we went through all of that, she explained all that. And then she talked about even, again, with the goal being even she gets back to 100%, she is the rest of her life because of a, of a transplant. She's always going to have lots of medical appointments and testing and all sorts of things that she had to do. And um, so I, I, uh, I decided it was time to bite the bullet and have a candid conversation with her. So I, I told her that I... I um, that I wanted to talk to her first and that nothing has been decided. We haven't, there isn't any done deal. Nobody's talked to anybody else, but that it is, appears quite evident, evident to all of us that the way the job has changed, um, I said then, and because you hired a very good person and you've trained her very well, um, the town clerk and a town clerk's assistants are not justified for two full-time positions. 
They, they just aren't. The work just isn't there. And she was, of course, she was, oh, yes, and we didn't understand. And I said, well, we're not, you, you can come in and you can explain everything you want, but this isn't, this isn't coming from any individual. It's coming from what all of us see. And that it is not, um, we, uh, we support you in your goal of coming back 100%. It is not our desire to get, get rid of you. Um, but as, as a select board and looking at the town budget, we can't justify two full-time positions to do that work. So much of it is done, you know, people are not coming into the office anymore. It's just, it's just complete, it's changed dramatically from the beginning of COVID to now, and, and it continues to change. So, and I told her, I said, I, I know this is hard and you just, I need you to, I need you to hang on to, we're not, we're not trying to get rid of you, but, and we're looking at a lot of restructuring of positions and that what we is sort of have to do as a, as a board is we've got a pot of jobs and we got a pot of money and we got to make it all fit together. And that maybe we need to work out something like, you know, um, as, as Kim comes back more and uh, Krista, who is, is, <laughs> is, is very smart, very good, very intelligent that she's, you know, half time with Kim and she's half time with the select board. Um, and she was immediately, would we I said, no, I haven't talked. I haven't proposed anything to Krista. We haven't proposed anything to anybody that I wanted to talk to her first to let her know that here's what we're thinking, that it's just, um, I, I said, you can come in and talk to us, but it's going to be a hard sell to convince the select board that 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 workload requires two people. Um, so so she and, you know, she sort of she did a couple of good exhales and, and appreciated having the conversation. Now, I said, we're just beginning the conversations. We're looking at it. We're trying to figure it out. Um, but between all of us, our goal is to come up with a solution that works for everybody that we didn't, we didn't want to get rid of her. We certainly didn't want to lose Krista, but we just, um, we got the world of work has changed and we need to realize that. And we only got so much money. So, um, there we go. So I, I think as we're looking at, you know, at all these positions and who does what and how things are split up that we need to look very, um, and I think we can, I think we have to look very realistically at, uh, at the kind of things that, um, that Krista might be interested in and could pick up in splitting and splitting that position with the town clerk. Okay. Well, thank you for having that conversation with her, Susan. Yeah, yeah. It, as I told her, I know it was hard. She said, the good, as I say, God bless her, her spirits are high, and uh, they've adopted a puppy. And um, and she said, well, and she does love her. She sees, she was laughing. We were talking, we were talking about Brian Shackett and being, you know, and being gone. And she said, well, she loves her job, and it's not that she's counting, but she retires in September of 2030. <laughs> so, so anyway, and, and again, who knows? And, and the other issue that we're going to have to talk about, and I don't know how we're going to figure out because we've never had, I don't, certainly in the office, I don't, I don't know, Rolly, maybe you can tell me if there's everybody, been, ever been anybody on the, on the road crew, but she has now run out of her, um, of her, the part-time disability thing. Um, and Ron has said, I was talking to him today, the insurance they've, she's not fully disabled. So she's at the beginning of April. She's got, she's not, she doesn't have anything. So we're going to have to, we're going to need to sit down and figure out what we want to do. It's sort of looking as though it could be three months until she's back. Um, uh, realistically, the way things have gone for her, I think that's probably a fairly safe assessment. So, and and again, her doctors on this one have put that she shouldn't be doing any work. Um, so I, we, we're going to have to figure out something there. Susan, did the topic of the town clerk hours reducing, like cutting off Fridays or something like that ever come up or not really in the conversation? Well, no, cause she's, cause again, you know, Kim's still the town clerk and she's not coming in at all. I mean, for uh, town clerk office hours, it sounds like no, but like dropping off a day. 
for Chris that you've been running like a 32 hour week? Well, for, well, we're certainly, <laughs> Krista is, is feeling that she deserves more money. And I think since she's really doing most of Kim's job, that's not, that's not an unrealistic request from her. Not at all. You know, so as I say, it's all this is here and we got to. <laughs> it's an interesting stew. <laughs> Kim's in an appointed position. I, I, we don't make that jurisdiction over her though, right? Uh, we can. So what the, the funny part of all this stuff is that the elected town clerk, elected treasurer, are treated separately under state law. There's they're hired for life, if you will, a lot of times. But Kim is hired by the voters directly for three-year terms. There's no provision for a recall. There's no provision for a select board to have any control over another elected official. Mm -hmm. The select board does set the salary and propose it to voters, which happened back at town meeting there. So that voter-approved line item, if you will is what the voters have indicated to you is should be the clerk's salary. Now, Krista is appointed by, she's not elected, she's appointed. So because she's appointed and she's not exempt, she's more like a town employee. So you do have more control over changing things with her. You can't really direct the town clerk at all. You can't direct the town clerk to open on Tuesdays at noon or totally off limits. Then you can't control how many times she's in and out. She doesn't get benefits, she doesn't get leave benefits, but she does control the number of hours. If she wanted to work zero hours or two hours a week, that is for that approved salary line. So that, that's why, that's two different answers to your question. They're, they're related, but I think if you wanted to have a conversation with Krista and go along with, let's talk about what's best for the office with Kim's current situation, when Kim comes back, does Kim come back at nights only? Does Kim come back during the day and have all sorts of health protocols for the other employees and put them at, you know, sort of a position of saying, you know, I'm not vaccinated, I'm sick. You know, there's going to be that difficulty, which we've talked about with Kim meetings ago. Exactly, yeah. How that would be difficult to really have um, a high-risk employee with, Everybody's pretty relaxed now. You know, we come in with costs, we come in with seasons. Well, and especially with public. I mean, public comes right. in too. It's a public office. Yeah, so that's, so. That, that's the troubling part for me that, like, I know that within labor law and within people's rights to their job and all that stuff, that it can get complicated. So, whatever the board's decision is, I think we probably would say, to me anyway, if there's going to be a decision, let's keep talking this out to see if there's a plan. Keep talking to Kim. Yes. And see if we can all get ready. Yeah. See if anyone yeah. carry on with this discussion and see if it can be formalized. And I and I think there's a couple of phases. The first phase is from now through June. Krista knows, you know, she's had seven months of doing everything. Basically two jobs with one week off. And and she's gotten no compensation adjustment. She hasn't. I think she's taken over the delivery tax collector um, duties from oh, Kim, okay. which is totally under your control. That's not an elected position. That is your position. So you could revisit the DTC job like it's own. Now, that's a separate pay. Yeah, that's a separate pay. So does Krista get paid separate for that? Oh, she has, she, she's been doing the work, acting, following through the delivery tax stuff, but no compensation for that. Oh, that's I think Kim and you know, his thing was the, is the three thousand dollars we get thirty two hundred and thirty two hundred. Well, that was that was a bonus though. No, no. thirty two hundred is what Kim gets now. Oh, yeah, I think I met Krista. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you said Krista. Yeah, that was a separate decision. So Kim gets paid. Yeah, she's getting paid three thousand dollars. So Kim gets paid. Kim was paid for the delinquent tax, yes. but Chris is doing the work. <laughs> I'd have to talk to Chris. <laughs> split it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds like we need to make this a discussion with Ken and Krista and absolutely make it work with them and us and see if some of those things could be discussed. Open forum. Um, um, while we're on the Krista yeah. conversation, did you read Jennifer's request? 
Jennifer made a request to us on the cleaning again. And this one? And I remember, I, I didn't see it on that one that was printed off, but I saw it in the email and it was sent out in her memo. She yeah. asked for Krista to be cleaning again. She asked her, us to revisit and, and look at whether Krista could clean. I think I read that. Did I read that wrong? Yeah. So what happened with that was there was like, I think Roland had a comment of advertising. Didn't, didn't, I know it wasn't going to be my daughter, but I knew it was oh, going to be. So Lisa, did well, he ever get in touch with you? No. But let me go back to the history really quick. So initially we had a person that came in on Saturday for an hour or two. Sarah came in, um, Sarah Patch. She did that for almost a year, I think. And then she finally left. And then the building blew up and we had all sorts of debris around here. We never really got back on the cleaning part of it. Yeah, one idea was to hire Krista for overtime mm -hmm. to come in because she had 40 hours locked in as assistant clerk. This situation with Kim has sort of worked that in because if we can have Krista add that to her workload, then she would get paid whatever she'd get paid for a regular job. And it wouldn't be an add-on to overtime. We're paying you know, $50 an hour at overtime for the over 40 that so anyway, that's how that worked out. Whether Chris still wants to do it, I don't know. That's that's another question. If whether she want to add that to her forty. Wait, I was gonna say, is she is she is she stressed out more she's doing already? I don't know. No, no, she seems to be in good shape. I think we had a conversation today about just her scheduling time off. You know, like one week in seven months is pretty light. Yeah. And that's eight to four Monday through Friday. You know, without you know, this morning she came in late and and Jennifer and I kind of covered the morning shift for, for a couple hours, so she could do some medical stuff. So that's what we, that's that's unusual. Usually she's there at eight, eight to four, kind of thing. So I told her that you know we have to come up with a three month plan because we know Kim's not going to be available for your public hours. Whether that's adjusting hours, we talked about you know summer hours are coming up, maybe and they close at around noon on Fridays. Maybe we start that early. Yeah. Um, she's worried about the hours. She uh, they come in a half hour early, kind of thing to make up that time. So it's still the forty hours. So she's worried about. She would be worried about losing hours. And I said, well, sometimes when when a change of schedule comes in, your rate doesn't, your gross doesn't change, but you do have reduced hours. So it's like a little raise. Exactly. But you make the change for the long term, where you don't provide forty hours anymore. You change the thirty two, but people in that boat don't see a reduction in their weekly gross. Yeah. I've heard of that. Happen. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's an option to really change the structure of that office in a thoughtful way. But that's, again, from what you guys are saying, it's better for a whole discussion. There's lots of options there. But would Krista take that on as part of her new schedule of the 20 hours of time time, if you want to look at it that way? And, and then we, the problem we were having with the overtime was two different bits of gray, pay for the same person it was some blending formula that we had to come up with for the two hours of cleaning and it's it, a new letter of hire and it just got legal and it was like then Roland two meetings ago said just advertise we'll go out the contractor again we, we didn't do that because this kind of came up as a wait a minute if the board's going to grab 20 hours back or have that discussion maybe I do I'll can get hire a contractor for a deep clean of the whole building yeah last a month or so you know and then we can start fresh that way in the interim while, while you have this conversation about the staff within the uh, office. But I don't want to, I, I told Krista today, I said, it's already been long enough. We need to start making some adjustments for Krista's sake, whether it's time off, you know, dealing with the DTC pay thing that it, is she doing a hundred percent of it and not getting the compensation that the board wanted the DTC to get? Exactly. That kind of question. Yeah. And what about uh, the long term? It does Crystal want to um, and be support for Jen? So Jen has the same situation on payroll and AP. They, they work together on a very basic level because the treasurer and the finance people always have to do some parts under their statutory boundaries. But Jen could use a backup for if she's gone on that one payroll day where Chris is doing a lot of it. She knows how it works, but she's ready to take that for Jen as a a team B, we call it. You know, what's the backup plan? Right now, our, our backup plan used to be never take it right. seriously. Now but we, we don't have that. Sure. Yeah. If we got a big jam, they would come in. Of course. 
So those, that's kind of the, the thing. You know, there's so much on the table that you know, if cleaning is an issue, I, I can probably have somebody come in and clean. They did this room once. They can come do the second floor again. You know, that kind of thing is an interim. It does get it's dirty up there. It, nobody's done any deep vacuuming and all that other stuff. Or we take out a ad as uh, the board wanted and just say, oh, cleaning's a problem. Let's get a regular person in here on every Saturday and contract that out totally. The staff is off that duty. And that's also Kristen's one that approached saying, hey, how to do it, because she wanted to figure out the mice side of it. So that's, I'm getting a lot of balls in the air. It just seems like something got to settle down eventually. I know, you know? goodness. And if you cut back with your fire, insurance then have insurance right yeah general liability is required for contractors and then the workers comp can leave with a bunch of paperwork from yeah. the insurance company. yeah so that's another question if you want to if, if you want me to do the deep cleaning and get a one-time person up there to really clean everything while you guys figure out if you're going to advertise or roll it into uh, krista's time that, that there's time for that kind of discussion I wouldn't waste time, I guess, but can we pick, you know, continue this with whoever you want to talk to at the next meeting and get this done? Because I don't want to have Krista feel like she's being feel like squeezed by all this uncertainty. Yeah, I mean. And certainly the lack, the lack of the compensation review, if you want to call it that. Just yeah. It. It's, it initially started out with a, okay, we have a, we have a person that needs to get medical care. Krista was all going to come and jump in. And now we've had you know, multiple three months extensions and, it, it, and it's just getting long for gets to that point where you should do something. Susan, you and Kim are going to have another conversation. Or do we make a request to ask him to come in and talk about the billing portion? Start there. No, Krista. I think we should talk to Chris. Ah, uh, Krista. I think we should talk to them both. Well, we'll yeah, talk but she them. talked to Kim. Yeah. But I feel like we I think none of us have talked to Chris. Well, I've talked to Krista, but none of us have really had a conversation with yeah, her. So the board has not put something on the table to talk about, but talking about anything is going to be helpful. Right. I, I, mean, I don't I don't want to make this a turning Krista and Kim against each other in any way either. Like our it might be like our role in the board is to if Krista is going to work, we and Kim and maybe Kim don't, I don't know. Just make sure that the full form of the conversation stops. Yeah. Well, it's un it's unanswered. Yeah. It's an issue. It is an issue, right? And do we even know if Krista wants to keep doing all this work? <laughs> that would probably be a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think that's a good place to start. As I say, I I and I and I think you know, Krista could be in a very um could be she's in a very awkward position because of course Kim hired her and Kim's trained her. And, you know, so I'm sure she doesn't want to say anything negative about Kim. Um, so I think that's sort of where Matt, as you're saying, you know, it comes to us as the board to um, to help everybody sort this out. And that's why I figured I wanted to talk to Kim first. And as I say, her, one of her first questions was, have you talked to Krista? And I said, no, I haven't. Um, but but in the office several times and signing and doing things um just said you know and asking her how she's doing and Kim being and what she needs and you know and and I said you know it's getting you know we're sorry for Kim but this is obviously getting kind of long and I don't you know when it takes this long who knows if she's ever going to be able to come back full time you know maybe we end up in a situation where Kim can only realistically come back Part time, half time, and and you assume more of those jobs. And she didn't look at me and say, "That's a stupid idea." I really disagree with you. I, you know, again, she's in a, she's in a, she's in a, an awkward situation. Um, and and I I know, I'm sure for Kim, obviously, this is very difficult. On top of dealing with this terribly complex, I'm sure, very frustrating health issue. You know, it's the um, still in her mind, the way the office was functioning, which was certainly changing through COVID and has continued to change. And, and again, the reality when somebody, when somebody is out of a job in a small office for six months, the office is going to change and adapt because it has to, um, not because the person is good or bad or anything. It's literally because the person isn't there. So I think maybe what we need to do is, 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 is talk with 
Chris said, maybe what I should do, since I'm the one who talked with Kim, is can set up and, and talk with her on the phone, you know, tomorrow or the next day and say, Here, here's what I talked about with Kim. And we sort of think now what we all need to do is sit down together and, uh, and talk about it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think so. I think it was beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's beginning. While you're talking to Chris, you see, see what she's looking at. I mean, the, her I'm point? All, uh, if, she, yeah. if she wants to clean, we, we can put it out to bed, but we, we went eight months without any responses previous. Crystal wants the two hours of week, every bi weekly. What the hell? As long as there's no legality, bogus. Here you go. If Crystal wants to do it, she's willing and ambitious enough to take on the role, by all means, here you go. Be willing to fill a spot. That's my and, that's my take. Well, as as long as and and there I I missed something, Ron. Is it okay for her to do that if she's forty hours? We would just have to prove her overtime. <clears throat> well, yeah. So if, if she had overtime, but let's call it budgeted overtime. Is what right. I'm talking about. Your but you're in a budget overtime. I'd probably budget it based on her just her current rate, whatever it happens to be. Right. Yeah. Change. Okay. Add overtime. The other proposal was to was to have a higher rate and then have all that overtime. So it was, it was getting up into another and it required two different rates. So yeah, that's right. you don't have any blended rates. I know. Just right. we talked about like the program hiring us out for somebody who's going to be X amount, whatever. It was like seventy five dollars yeah. a week or something. But it's just it's the exactly. higher rate and improve a two and a half hour overtime and just keep it simple. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's what I do. Right, keep it simple. If she did, if she'd be okay with the current rate of overtime to do the one or two hours a week, yeah, mm -hmm. that I'll still do the deep cleans. I haven't been done for a long time. So yeah, I she, yeah, I think that's a good idea. She wants to do the deep clean. Yeah, she can do extra hours for the deep clean. Right. I don't know if she has the right equipment for that. That's, oh, okay. That's deep cleaning. Good. Okay. Okay. What we usually do with the cleaners: quick run around, pick up stuff, wipe stuff down, gotcha. catch up, clean the bathroom. That's that's why it's only an hour and a half. It's not a deep clean or Again, that's what I was gotcha. Gotcha. So it's really clean waste. Okay. We usually do it twice a year anyway. So it's kind of due to the spring. We should all get together and do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. we, we can, I, can, I can put that up with Krista if you're okay with that. I'll just talk to her tomorrow and say, do you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy with it. I read, read it in Jen's note and I just didn't want it to keep lingering. It's time to, it's time to hit the nail on these things. Pick, pick I've been here a year. We've talked about this for a year now. <laughs> Your office has to be kind of gross at this point. I don't know. Well, you were here the other day once peeing that sensor spot, and it was... It was a little dusty, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... Yes, no, it's not, it's time. it is time for the spring cleaning. It's, yeah. it's a good time to do all this stuff anyway. But the, the other person wants to take up from there and do a maintenance plan. And yep. The other thing in Jen's note that I noticed, ARPA reporting deadline was 4.30... So that's the end of this month, right? Uh, end of next month. Correct. April 30th. April 30th. Um, what what is that? What does that mean for us as the select board? Nothing. Nothing. No, it's just every because we're a municipality that received less than $10 million, mm -hmm. which is a lot of municipalities, we are in the annual reporting cycle. Okay. So she just have to report what we've spent. No, I'll do that as part of the ARPA grant manual. Okay. Okay, yeah. so the next meeting we'll have something on that for us to review or not? Uh, you have it already. It's, what I'll do is I'll yeah. take the ARPA report that's on the on the home page of the website mm -hmm. and put that into the U.S. Treasury format. Okay, and then hit send and we're done. Okay, yeah. And then the other she she mentioned the money came back from FEMA and said mentioning that could go towards things that if she didn't know if that was legal or not. Who makes that determination? It's a FEMA. She was saying it was in her note. Um, planning for payoff. Paid I'm not sure if we can use the, the FEMA. the FEMA reimbursement from the 2019 flood. Oh, the flood event. Yeah, to so pay so. for our paving loan. Who decides that? Who determines that? Yeah, so that money came back as unrestricted federal money to recover our loss. So it's really like, do you want to put that? Where normally it would go is to go back into the unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. Right. 
You saw that in the 2020 audit that you just got? Yes. The other side fund balance balance was low than it really never has been. It was close to 300,000 or something. Usually we're in five or 600,000 range and that difference was that check. Okay. So when it comes back, the question of how does it get out of the unassigned fund balance is maybe her legal question. She, her, her question was any idea or any thoughts on possible payoffs or loans. So yeah, no, again, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm right. an accountant. So I'm just reading her memo and I, I don't ever want, she's done such a good job yeah. that I don't want to feel like I didn't read her memos and ignore them. <laughs> like this, I'll be honest, I read her stuff way more than every promise. <laughs> Money is funner. Yeah, there you well, go. It, it is. It is funner. And also, we didn't receive this a year ago. So we, we exactly. asked for this. So for us to make sure this would be absolutely great. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that there's an open forum on this and say, yeah. well, part of the an original plan when FEMA, once we knew that the money was going to be coming at some point, which it came in 2023. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, when you check out the center road loan, we knew we were creating a, a hole yeah. that could be filled. So Jennifer has been trying to be sure, basically, that when the note is due in May for the center road, that it gets paid off. And it's like $560,000 or something. Most of that being the board's decision, which would be a vote from the board, to pay it off in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I think she wants to be sure about how, and I haven't even, you know, we haven't got to that point yet of putting that memo together for you because it might, might include some of your money, it might even yeah. So at some point you're going to be faced with a payoff to set a road from X, Y, Z, and all that stuff will have to be reviewed for legal and proper and all that stuff. But I think, I think she's working towards that memo by letting you know the goal of FY23 was to not have Central Road go to 24, and we, specifically took it out of the 24 budget there is no money in 24 to pay a second year of that loan if we wanted to redo it so it has to happen somehow yeah so we will figure that out it will be a separate memo that said okay we're ready to pay off this thing here's how we're going to do it so as far as i know the money came back unrestricted so there's no strings yeah. attached the only string that i could think of is that when money goes back to the unassigned fund balance the board has asked the voters how to use it. Sometimes, like how many days? Exactly, 50,000 right. on that, yeah. That's and we got a huge fire truck and stuff like that coming up, so. Honestly. And we talked about our and pay for parks. Right, and don't don't this, exactly. The, the, uh, the loss in equipment revenue essentially is what we, I mean, there's a delta there, so. All kinds of options to talk about in the future. Yeah. Okay, so I'll say it. Sorry. Good. No, it's good to talk about it. So Susan is talking with Ken and Krista next week. Well, I'll, I'll talk with Krista first, and then I think we'll need to set up a time for all of us to talk or several of us to talk um, about just to begin to explore options. Should that be a special yeah. meeting? Well, well, I don't know. Do we want to do it as a special meeting? Do we want to just have some people begin the conversation and then say, okay, let's go to the board? Um, I think we ought to ask him what she wants. Ask him if she wants a special meeting. I think that's a wise idea. <coughs> sure. I ask what she prefers, you know, how. how mm -hmm. Sure, because whatever we do with Kim, it's going to be set up by Zoom, so. Right. Good. All right. Great. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Do we need to, to approve the warrants? Okay. It's not on the agenda, we but there, we signed them. Approve the warrant. I can see you. Yeah, I get it for the minute. Yeah. No. Okay. 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 I think I need to sign some more of those warrants. I'm not like you, like we have some of them. Yeah, we have a motion to approve the first three months to stay quiet. Can we have a motion to approve the warrants? It's not on the agenda, but we're adding that. You're adding it. Hey, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Susan, are you abstaining since you're not yeah. here? 
Yeah, I'm abstaining. My arm isn't that long. <laughs> yeah, it's going to second, but there's that. And the minutes. Yeah, did y'all read them? Did y'all? I did not. Okay. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> Let's push those to the next meeting. I was a slow, oh, apparently Matt didn't either. Yeah. We'll push those to the next meeting. <laughs> At least we're honest. Yeah. I, I read a lot. Of things, you know, I did read a lot. Yeah, you read everything else. It's all good. Um, so I went to that lovely meeting. Um, yeah. I called, I called in. To the one I was at, at the tech center? Oh, I thought you were with the other one. Oh, no. This was the one at the tech center. What was it that I went to? The V to DC. Cabinet of the governor. And then this is the one with the Zoom that we can zoom in on Thursday coming up. Mm -hmm. oh. This is different. That was okay. the select board thing at Rutland. Okay. No, this was, I got to schmooze with all the big dogs, Ooh. you know, from the governor's cabinet. Um, basically, there, it was just about, it was every department from the state talking about all of the money that they have. Yeah. They have two point seven billion dollars to give out, okay, and each department has agency. I guess is the word has a pot of money, and they've got lots of grants and lots of things that they're going to be giving out this money with. Um, so it was pretty interesting. The only people that didn't get money is the agency of transportation, which I thought was very interesting. When they need money, right, for roads, and they did not get any of the money because it was part of it was part of the agreement that they don't get any. Um, so, um, well, fun fun fact: I'm very involved in the agency transportation oh. on the bidding side of things. Friday, two state projects were bid out, and no bidders. Interesting. And if you look through the past thirty bids on the state, I would say fifty percent have received one bid only. So what you're saying, rejecting them? Yeah, so like there was a nine point seven million dollar bid bid job that just got rejected. What you're seeing is us contractors are full. Oh wow! And the money's there, the work is there, but the workers are not. Yeah, I hit a sweet spot on those culverts though because we got nineteen requests for the bid documents. You have a sweet number, is what you have a sweet. You have a sweet scope. We have a sweet scope that this scope of work. That hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand yeah. dollar project. It's perfect for labor, right? It's perfect for a company that needs a fill job, you know, uh, like where the states uh, release all these two to five, six, ten million dollar projects, and you just can't. The allocations are just interesting. And the, the window, the window of agencies' work is tough. It's a long time. April fifteenth, September fifteenth. There's only so much you can do in a three month, four month window. So. Right. Interesting. So anyway, we're gonna. So the program, you know, it's it was um, ag um, was there, Dep Department of Economic Development, Agency of Commerce for infrastructure, which was very interesting. A lot of infrastructure, even the libraries, um, buildings and services, emergency services, um, natural resources, um, Agency of Administration. So go high on your project. Really. You know, yeah. so. Um, in addition to the fire station, <clears throat> I did get a bunch of paperwork that I'm just going to give to you because you know. So, um, how do we go about finding this? We'll see. There's a there's so many different. Avenues. Oh my gosh! And <clears throat> are you getting emails about a lot of this stuff, or yeah, it's got to be so overwhelming yeah. because I don't know how it's happening. So funny you say that. that. How does that work? Do you have a select board? Like, well, go, go like, down the like, like Eden there. No, I was just gonna say there's that poor Eden town clerk was there and she was uh, she was like uh, overwhelmed and yeah. she was like, I don't know what to do. I, it was she was overwhelmed, she was there. And I was thinking the same thing. So that I think that's sort of segues into my little situation. So situation, I, I don't know where you are, Savannah, in the whole history, but. 33 years working for town governments, past due on retirement, because I could have done it last year. My plan was last September, potentially, the soft plan. 
and stayed. And it was it was really my choice, obviously, but I also felt that there were so many projects already, this is before this kind of stuff started, that I wanted to see through. So I was like, I can I can stay. Well, I see some problems with structure and, and things like Justin's job was lumped into the town administrator and planning and zoning is lumped, which takes away from this kind of bigger problems. It, it really prevented the select board from doing their job, which was long-term planning and capital investment, because you're getting you're stuck on a lot of little stuff your meetings. And now it's 8:30 and everybody's ready to go home. You haven't done your sort of your leadership position job. So I'm and and what I said we you know, I need to make a call. So we made a call and Matt's like, what's the date? Because we've been talking about it since uh, September. Exactly. So we said, okay, June 25th, it makes the best, best math for me to retire that the way the formula works at the state retirement home. But then what's, what does the board want next? There's still a lot of things in transition. There's more getting added to. There's going to be training and onboarding of new people. Justin is moving along with Terry. Planning and zoning person is probably going to be me. If that gets advertised soon, I help a little bit with the highway onboarding. And then there's these projects that all have deadlines and people to talk to and things to file and RFPs to award. You know, you, they're not all um, one off things. They're like long term, multi month, sometimes multi year projects. We have one project we've been going on since 2005, for example. So, uh, I asked the board before, I said, what do you, what do you see for a transition? And, and I think that there is a transition. I never intended to just drop the town and say, okay, I'm done, I'm doing it, good luck, I'm doing things. <laughs> so what does the town want to do is my main question about what's next. And one of the ideas was to finish, so through the June 25th is a normal, normal workload, keep everything moving, keep the reports coming to you, make sure all the lights are turned on and everybody's getting trained and making progress. So that's normal business. There's a lot of details to that, but anyway. And then I have to take a 30 day break. And 30 day break is no reported hours, phone still works, you know, that kind of thing. But on June, July 26th, which would be the first day after that 30 day break, I can still have a letter of hire for up to one year. It's a it's a called a temporary position. And any hours, there's no hour limit, but I, that allows me to be exempt from the retirement program. If I have a longer commitment than a year, then over 24 hours, I have to rejoin the retirement system and start contributing again, which is a loss mm -hmm. on me because the benefits aren't injured. I've already lost money basically by not taking benefits earlier. But right. my wife is a CPA and she's done the math. <laughs> she tells me it's 25000 a year by not retiring when I was eligible, for example. And I don't understand the math, but every year that you stay and contribute, you have to work like 40 years to get that. To get that back. back. Yeah. So the math is all bad. And I think that's the Beamer's plan is that they yes. really set those limits and they do all the math so that people retire when they, they get to 30. No, they don't stay full time and keep contributing. Yeah, so that's a personal problem. But I want to let you know that that's a real thing. I, and and I, we we really have been stuck with what do we have for a structure to advertise. But we haven't made much ground on this. But that that's where I'm like, let's just advertise and see what we get. And who gives a shit about the structure? Runs and have start training. <laughs> you know, but, I don't know what we. But you 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 will be in the background. He's gonna yeah. He's gonna be we, molding them anyway. You want like twenty hours a week, right? Well, I, well the, the, the idea was, and this is just how I'm trying to try to see how I want to see things, is you get the 30-day break, we immediately start with an hourly type of setup. So you, we're not on that salary anymore, but you want an hourly wage, which a lot of times you do when you, after you retire your company, you do hourly. And that position specifically is meant to focus on two things, which is you need a new job description for town misery. The changes you've made this year already have sub substantially changed my job description. So we don't have a town administrator job description. Okay, so you're almost a town manager at this point. You're yeah. So, a town right. So th these are the things yeah. that really make a difference when you're talking about what do you do with your person. Town manager structure is different. A town administrator that is refocused 
and we've talked about highway being a need and, and you guys are talking a little bit about sand, you know, would the town administrator have more direct control over some of these things that a select board said? Because you, the board has direct control of the town and implementing it is best done with you thinking about things in a bigger sense. And I, and I, what I'm, what I'm thinking is if you have bigger projects, these are bigger, these are bigger, this is redevelopment of North High Park. This is made bigger construction projects, things like that. The town administrator role can be shifted into, and this is the longer term thing, I'm not talking about the transition, the town administrator really protecting your time so that you are more of a leadership board than a reactionary board to issues. So how you do that is you, you do what you've already started doing. You allow the town administrator to bring you projects that really need you to say, yes, we are going to do that $2 million project and we're going to have it public and we're going to have meetings on it. And you're not talking about driveway cut anymore. It's such a waste of time for an elected board to spend multiple meetings worried about driveway cut. That should have never made it to your agenda. That hasn't even been paved. That should have been dealt with by your staff Dealt with exactly. never come back, and it was a lack of resources because nobody was there watching the baby contractor. You know, the person wanted something done, and yeah. there was a disagreement with the highway and the person, and it blew you up to your agenda. You know, so I think there's better ways for you as elected, not you personally, but as a select board. You know, you're going to be up three and a half million dollars pretty soon. When I first started, it was 1.7, I think, or something 10 years ago. So you talk about some serious annual money that needs to be managed in a long-term leadership way. And I feel like you get bogged down on some things that really are wasting your abilities as a board to make good decisions for the long term. I agree. It's still going to have small town stuff. Oh, oh always. Still we still want them, always, right? We always want them. Always, yeah, I came here. I came here with small town stuff. I didn't want to be politician. Yeah, the small town stuff is fun. No, but... I know. <laughs> Because I got you in my ear the whole meeting, Helen. <laughs> what are you going to make for it? Well, Matt says we're going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make for you. The transition is to work on that. Because that's going to impact the budget process starting in September. It's not that far away. Within the budget process for FY25, you're talking about, you're going to have a whole new town structure by then. Yeah. The things that you're doing now or have done or done, finance is good, board clerk is good, planning zone hopefully will be listers good. is gonna be so good. Listers, there'll be a lot of things that I feel like I feel like you just downgraded a year ago when we started, we didn't even have an account. We it's very true. It was Ron. Ron Ron was even like writing to get people's checks. And it was yeah. Yeah, that's double time. He was triple timing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, when we get to the point of what do you, what does the town need for what that is a good it should be a that discussion. And I see the, the grants and project management community development and what the future of Hyde Park is. Yes. More focused on more. Uh, yeah, we have to. I think so. Yeah. So I think we get the we get the position advertised. Well, we need as an umbrella <laughs> town administrator, or whatever it be, just to see what we're gonna get through the door and filter through that and say, hey, this person has no they, they have no experience in the zoning or whatever it be, or what some experience in this side. And then, you know, you no this is way more on your side than me for my understanding. And then, and then we're using Ron as to fill the gap of what that person really lacks. Maybe. Well, no, well, almost. So, what, I, what I'm again, the planning and zoning person, mm -hmm. 24 hours is in the budget. Right. right. We need to advertise for that. If that works out well, then I think we go to your yes your side. If it doesn't work, out well, yeah. you still need somebody to do the plan. So, okay. Right, because we had already agreed to. I think if I'm yeah early, we'd already agreed to advertise for the zoning and plan because we thought you were going to do that, and then you decided you weren't interested, right? <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> highway planning and zoning start the new year, right? And then go into this. What do we do with the town administrator? Get it funded in the budget. Because that new position may not be funded in 24. But that, that's, the, that's the thing. If you, you, you still got to advertise for it, it's mm -hmm. going to take six months before you even get a, 
Well, it depends on the job. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you had a job description that was solid and you could advertise it and you decide to fund it the right way, right. then that's the golden end of this multi-person changeover thing that you've been starting. At 24 hours, do they get benefits? No. Retire. So just retirement. And they get leave and right. So what, get are we, what are we going to pick up is what I'm worried about. Someone that's already doing that part-time in another town is my guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of time. A lot of people work in multiple towns to piece that together. And sometimes the towns grow together to pay the health insurance. You're mandated, mandated at 30 hours. But we already agreed to do that. Yeah. We already agreed to advertise that. to advertise that and we put that in the budget for this year. Okay. Is it if I remember correctly that the plan commission needs to review the job description before it's advertised? There that's on their agenda for the 10th. Yeah. So it can't be advertised until the 11th or the 12th or whatever. Well, the select board has to be around the 11th or whenever you're ready. So it's a, it's a process that we're going through right now to get that done. And then when it's advertised, you guys will pick somebody and I'll be here to train that person before the break. And then when I get back, if you want to have me back, we'll immediately get into this bigger picture of, well, of what that I job description is. I think we, you want to be part time. That's why I understand. No, I don't know if I want to be part time. I want to. I want to go to hourly for the next year. I want to go to hourly to keep up. Let's say you know, like the the project go for money, like get this. That would yeah. be a good job yeah. for him to throw at you and say here grants and well, uh, there's also right. past projects that he has. I know. Yeah. So they got three things going on. You got past projects, stuff that's in. I know everybody involved, all the landowners, everything's going well, they're just going through the process. Then you have these new projects that are coming on. And those projects need time to get going. And there's deadlines and things like that. So, so is there so we put it in the budget for a zoning person? Yeah. Who's to say that that budget money could be your money when you're coming back from retirement? We could use that as his hourly money or his 24 and if we're looking for a, an administrator that he's training at the same time does that make sense well no because well, i thought we decided, decided that the administrator job needed to be broken out because it's already out of control the thing is well that's what i'm saying he would fill that role because he's going to be part-time on 24 yeah. and then and, and but get one on board and then figure it out you know somewhat you you can still if you have the right candidate. We get the right candidate. We want them. That's what I'm saying. Advertise for the right candidate. We get it. Well, what what I'm not quite sure what you're advertising for. I know. I think that's right. We Dumbness. you know. I think we need to fill the planning and zoning position so that all of that work is taken care of. Right. And then and then it's if you will our leftover is what do we want to create if you will, with the leftovers and the other things we want to do. Who fills the administrative position? Yeah. And we hire a and, and we you get the local phone call of hey, I want this or that or XYZ. Who's filling that role? I'm doing I'll this the yeah. administrative stays all the way you, through. You're gonna stay. Yeah. yeah. That'll stay yeah. for one year. Well, at the, at the at the hour at the when, hourly rate, what we decide. So it could be four months, right? I didn't get through my time. So <laughs> after yeah. July, right? Mm -hmm. You have a budget problem, right? Because you're planning twenty five, and you're making you may make changes to the budget that you need a town administrator that's full time or a town manager in July of twenty four. You know, whatever you're whatever you're thinking, whatever that solution is goes into the budget. Gets approved in March, hopefully, and then you advertise for the new person in April. And then I stay for those three months for the training and so on. And then I'm done, done sort of in July next year. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. No, but I may be saved for grants and projects as a separate grant funded position for well, the new time. Yeah, that's a different job. But there's a transitional town administrator window that a bunch of stuff is happening that I think we could control and make happen in the right way. Because I've had the experience of all the players, it's not like throwing somebody new into that mix. When all those things settle down, I mean, you'll know it because you'll see things happening that are good, positive, that change it. What I'm saying is, what happens? The right candidate comes around and fills this role later, and we don't take him now, and then timeline ends, 
and there's nobody here knocking at the door. Then where the hell are we? Well, we don't have any money in the budget to do that right now. No. Because we didn't plan. Think, but you don't I think you're in your eyes. Eyes. I think you are I think too. You're in your suit. I think you are too. Okay. But we had his salary funded it. Correct. For the, for this fis right upcoming fiscal year. Right. So to replace his salary, it's there. No. But no. the budget no. we just approved doesn't have his salary. Yes, it does. It has him it has, in it. It has two parts. It has, it has him and the zone. Correct. It has, three, it has three parts. The budget you just approved has 24 hour person. Right. Yep. It has uh, the assessment. 60% right? of my salary. And right. it has 40% from grants and reimbursement stuff to make my full salary. Okay. So next year, 25, it starts in September again. It's not that far away. Right. You're going to figure out how to do that. The grants are still going to be there for another two or three years. Don't forget, because ARPA is, is L, you can use that for salary too. And then you're going to have grants and programs that are starting to get built, to get busy. And, then, and I, don't, I don't care who you hire. If you have that many projects going on, there's going to be so much work to get that all checked off and done. It's scary. That's why I'm saying that. I don't like the right team that comes around. I don't think we, we I think we have. I, I don't think it's two people. I think it's your point. I think there's going to be two. It's definitely two. There's, like, there's going to be the town administrator who comes, agendas and, grant, and grants and LEMPs and all this other stuff that is town governance. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a grant project person pushing this stuff through for the next two to three years. Then ARPA is going to be done. You're going to spend your time money spent. So I have to look back through my notes because I feel like we decided to split the position into three people. I thought that's what we had talked about. Uh, yeah. I was one of the third. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You were one, the zoning in minute, uh, the zoning person planning and town administration. And then town administration. Yeah. And I'm suggesting road no. form and even talked about right. kind of the road form and piece of that. Correct. Right. And that's that's the challenge of. You've talked about it for years about how much influence yeah. our administrator of open education over the worker, directing the daily workload, changing the salt and sand practice. Whatever. So that could be a more strong, you know, stronger position for the town administrator to get in there. If you can say, look, the, the new town administrator is going to be the flash road commissioner and they're going to direct the work daily workflow, that, that would not sit well in the market. But maybe there's special projects that do get directed by the road. I don't know. That's we never got to that point. No. Yeah. I don't know how much you want to do on that. The projects are, is the fourth piece, and that is something but, that's. But the road commissioner is right here. Yeah. Right. What we say to Mark should be done right. by five people, by right. five, not people. one person. Five people. Because if you have an actual commissioner, they don't work for the board. Yeah, you would hire, you can hire a road commissioner, right. and that person would have whatever authority you grant them. Right. It could be one job. So technically, I'm the road commissioner for one thing right now, which is the 1111 permits, because you voted me to do the highway and driveway permits. Mm -hmm. That could be a road commissioner job. You hired Mark French to run the daily crew and spread gravel. That's a road commissioner duty that you told Mark he's doing. Yeah. You've kept some things for road commissioner, which is major projects like center road directed the, that work to happen. So now we sort of have these different parts of that. If you want to give up road commissioner totally and say one person's going to, then you need to know what you're giving up. I don't think we can fiscally. I think I think we just talked about adding a fifth man. I think that's it. You're going to really piss off. Well, you did, you could start budgeting more and more. If you made Mark French the road commissioner, he would have your authority on highways, and you wouldn't be able to say anything about highways if you gave him full authority. I think we keep it the way it is. It's not like we we work well. I think we are, we are and there aren't none of us that are that egotistical where we're like, no, nope, this is going to happen. You know, like we work and get the opinions of all, and I think that's the way that it should work. I think yeah. that's why you put yourself in yeah. the because you had your court to have it. Yeah. That small town feel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I do want to say one of the big things that caught my ear at this meeting was the Agency of Commerce has money, a grant for you to have someone come in and redo your zoning 
and bylaw updates. And I know we keep talking about how our zoning needs they're, to be updated. Let's not say we're going to add to them. But I don't know anything. I still want some small hill that we live in here. Excuse my language. We are not Burlington yet. I don't want to be. <laughs> oh, okay. Because that was a, and they said there's a lot of money for that. And yes. so, okay. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're okay. on that. And just to throw it out there, I don't know if the public listens to this, but right. But there is a lot of money for homeowners also. So I just want to get that out there. Um, sewers, wells. Okay. Yeah. Three meetings on state grants for housing. One is focused on adding apartment units to your house. Yes. Money is open to anybody. Yes. That was somebody today. Oh, how do you how do you Huge. apply for this one? I'll, I'll go over my little meeting today. I've got a resident. Okay. And it basically we will, they will give you fifty thousand dollars to add what these are grandmother apartment. They call them ADUs now, and you contribute twenty percent to the cost, and you agree to not rent uh, that Airbnb. unit for more than seven to eight hundred dollars a month for five years, and then you don't have to pay the fifty thousand back. And there's so we went down to Grange. Any money in there for that? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of that. Lots of that. Yeah, we should try to get some. Yeah, the energy committee met with the state person yesterday to try to figure out how to get fifty five hundred thousand dollars for high park. They'll need help with that eventually. Yeah. So I mean, it's just so much. I, I'm not trying to make light of it. a serious challenge to high park. Yeah. You know, like, do you have the resources? We don't have. Town administrator high park does not have the resources to make full use of that. Primarily because the planning and zoning position is vacant. I can tell you that much. Oh, because so, you need that person. Yeah, if I spend 10 or 15 hours on planning and zoning stuff, that's not pushing these projects forward, which are almost they're not free money to well, it's, for taxes, but you know, the debt on your kids because they're paying for the federal government. Exactly. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's spent here or spent in Burlington. It's still going to be yeah. tax burden on our kids, but so why not have the it'll be, it'll be less, exactly. it'll be less burden for high park down the road because we have newer facilities. Exactly. I keep thinking about it. I, I'm trusted. I'm, I'm like, there's I've stuff. been talking a lot about there has to be something in there to make it. There is. It's yes. Good. So well, I, I guess to solidify I all this We're stuff, keep going. I think we all need to be on the same page, first of all. I prefer to have a agreement with the board in the next couple months before June 25th to figure out what I'm going to do on July 26th. So whether that's uh, hourly at a certain dollar rate to keep the transition going and get things moving. I guess, I guess you have to make the first proposal here. I think so. I, I, exactly. I think I'm in my head I've outlined it in the sense of yeah, I hear what you're saying about get it done, but I also think that we can get there mm -hmm. and get it done, but have better foundation to make yeah. it happen. I mean, let's, not, let's, not, let's not make this a Krista and Kim thing. You know, or, right. let's just do it now. You, uh, like we're, we're talking three months ahead. There's so much going. It's, it's really like what Terry said. You know, I'm trying to focus on Justin, and you add more to that mm -hmm. with me trying to train somebody. There's, that's going to be another law. Yeah. getting access. I'm I'm probably the the best able to look at these things and make things happen. Than hiring a new person that certainly hasn't done it for 33 years. Mm -hmm. So I think it can work. I just need to get the planning and zoning stuff off to somebody else and yeah. focus on it. And then we will have a serious conversation about what you what you all want for after Ron or whatever, because I right. think that's going to be in the 25 budget, which again starts in September. Which I think it's going to be. Yeah, it could be. It could no, be, that's right. could be hundred thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot to grab hold of. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, if I'm doing eighty now, it's probably a hundred thousand for anybody that walks through the door when I when I go. Without your experience. Right. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. We yeah. probably need that more time right now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's hitting you in the face, sort of. It's like all yeah. no matter where you look. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay. Well, if you thought town meeting was chippy about the listers thing, it would really be next year when we turn around and ask for the budget increase, like what Marshall just asked for. I'm sure that would never going to do that. that that's never. what I'm saying. That was, I'm sure that was a really uncomfortable town meeting for Marshall. I just say that. They didn't ask town meeting. They did. 
No. It's all bone and all. It's all bone. It all, no. I'll show you that. It all happens at their smart board. Yeah, it happens to meetings. I'm sure it was uncomfortable. I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to be on this end of the table. I would vote, I'd be absent for that meeting. Sorry. Yeah. So, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't support a building. Yeah, should we adjourn? So, what was the name that you went to that got all these grants? Um, VEDC. -E -E. I'm not going to give you my notes. Those are just, yeah. Uh, I think it was VEDC, wasn't it? Vermont Economic Development. That was sponsored by LEDC. LEDC, that's it. LEDC. Yeah, it was the it was the governor's round table. It was. They're doing every county. They're doing every county in the state. It felt very cool. Was there a lot of people there? Yeah, I was. We don't have a generator here. No, we need. That's one of the things on the list. On the with the highway garage. Yeah. 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 And do we need to discuss J Judkins one 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 one? Cross subdivision, Forest Hill, Wickham Island. No for updates. Okay. I don't think there's any action items. So the Junkins 1111 got mailed to them and they're reviewing that, I guess. I heard from our call. Eventually, we'll have to have a follow up and say, well, do you have any changes to the license agreement or permit or something? Because I haven't spent a month since we mailed it to you. Okay. Let's see if she follows through with that. Eventually, get turned over to the town attorney. Hurry up, Susan wants to go back to the ocean. I'm going downstairs to make myself a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Jeez. I think I'm going to. Justin's pointing out that in my staff report, but I thought it would be good for the board to get a little bit more updates on these projects that just keep going on, like court cases and. Yes. Technical enforcement actions and those kind of things. So I'm going to try to put those at the end of the. That, that's what I, previous action items. It'd be yeah, to have a pre, or, or or prevailing action. I, that was something I was actually going to mention in our agenda. It'd be nice to have the lingering items in the agenda somewhere. So, did we find anything out about the water at the fire station? Again, one of those items. No, somebody was going to get a quote, and I don't. I think Ryan was it. You were right. Somebody was going to get a quote for a well. It wasn't me because I think it was Brian. The town attorney said Brian, Brian didn't do it. Oh, it was Brian. It was, you're right. So it's probably lingering. So, Good call, really, to think about. But, but we were talking about legality, whether it was going to matter or not, because we, we, we could was, pull a well, but it, there was legality whether the costs have already been voted there, whether it would cost no, off anyways. There's nothing that we found. So okay. it's, you guys have the choice to do that. On your specific question about path, there's a task report on your select board page. Yeah. What was one of the grants? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get ARPA money from the state. To the, well. um, the task report is on for every action item that you talk about at your minute meetings that is unresolved. Yeah. It goes on the task report. Okay. And you can. I actually look. think I did read that. Is, yeah. That's where I try to keep track of everything going back to 2010. <laughs> so pick up any one of those you want anytime. <laughs> So, yeah, it is a couple. We're, we're not managing like 100 employees. It's no big deal. We're not. <laughs> we, have, we try to put it out there for the public to see all the work. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep up for me. That's that's what it really comes down to when the neighbors start asking questions. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't. Know. I did talk to Steve Morris yesterday. Remember he did this? Oh yeah. So I sent you all an email of the path and kind of looking at that. So yep. I forwarded that to him. He was excited to know that something happened. Oh after, good. After a meeting. Oh, good. He was very appreciative that we actually took some initiative. Time on his oh, good. Hard, right, yeah. Practice it. <laughs> um, so and I that, want to. You don't have to work. I, I want it. I told him off camera, but did you guys, did you see on Front Porch Forum? He posted the agenda and the meeting. And I actually got, someone actually said something to me about it. So that was a great idea to yeah. do that. And I think that's going to be very well, helpful. Just, you mean on posting the rope? No, 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 no. On the meetings. He posted it on front more than just, more than just the agenda. The agenda and you like, links on there. It was very good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Bye, Susan. Go make a drink. <laughs> I'm gone. Everybody be happy. <laughs>